And welcome back. We've got our first match set up here. It's going to be Thinking with Portals, also known as Aria versus Sad Hippo. Yeah, Thinking with Portals, definitely a player that uh, I've seen a good amount. Some definitely made a name for also, themselves, uh, yeah. A lot on ladder as well, recently. Yeah, for most Sad people Hippo, involved uh... in, the, uh, in the KPC and the high level scene, it's a name that's very familiar to them by this point. Yeah, Sad Hippo on the other part, uh, at least personally, I don't really recognize much. I don't know about you. Well, that's never a bad thing. It's nice to get some new blood in the scene. Of course, yeah. yeah. Always nice to have, uh, have a new player potentially come in and uh, upset a few things here and there. Mm. Yeah, we've got quite a few interesting decks to go along with it. We see a uh, thing with portals bringing along a Millowing with a living statue in it. Living statue, not a card that's been favored much lately. And a Scotty, for that matter. Not a card you see too often in, uh, in uh, high ranks either. Yeah, Scott's, Scott's kind of fallen off these days. Just generally a lot of ways to get him to that half HP threshold. And also seeing uh, Arcane Bolt in both a Rathbow and a Stormbringer. We're also seeing and actually shoot the crossbow dudes on the Milloween. Is this the troll deck? Uh, these decks seem... I mean, you have a you have the toilet or the, the crossbow guild in, in Rathbow and the Stormbringer, which I mean, the Stormbringer is not that much of a surprise, I suppose. Hmm. But uh, the arcane bolts in three of these decks, especially in Ravager, uh, not something I would expect. Yeah, I mean, what on Sad Hippo's deck? He's got Sad Hippo's decks. He's got a variety of the good stuff. You see, a uh, Morda. We've got the Morda classic uh, Guardian Harbinger. That can be a real pain to deal with if it gets that priestess value off from the heal. Yeah, if you can just uh, endlessly rest that guardian to uh, protect 10 priestesses or something ridiculous like that could be entertaining to watch. Mm. Seeing a spirit infusion in, yeah. well, in Milloween, but as the a Milloween general... deck seems very interesting. It's uh, quite spell-heavy, focused on protecting that arcane golem, getting it buffed up with the infusion, maybe dropping some ravenous swarmers in there to get some additional DPS in. Legionnaires, one spitten in there. Yeah, drop a one spitten on the Legionnaires. Get some nice additional front loaded DPS as well with the infiltration and the Guardian to help protect it. It also seems that uh, that uh, Sad Hippo does maybe a bit fond of Crossbow Dudes, having it in, in two of his decks. Not a card that you tend to see at all in, in high ranks well, nowadays. It's not a card you see much, but it gets fairly useful. Yeah, it sometimes, does, it does sometimes you don't quite need the anti-air potential of the stim, but you still want the bridge capture, and they can come in pretty handy for that. Definitely. Uh, having a KP deck seems interesting. Yep, and we seem Not, to be getting uh, bans in now. Thinking with Portals is going to ban the King Puff from Sad Hippo, or Sad Hippo bans the Ravager in return, waiting on his second man to come in. So taking out that Ravager with the Barra and the Empowered Soul Stealer are two very dangerous cards. Especially, especially Ravager. the uh, the Ravager uh, yeah. with the throwers, the Lone Wolf, and the Empowered. That is hmm. not banning that sort of deck is asking for trouble, in my opinion. Yeah. That can I, end I the game very quickly. The, uh, either card behind the Brutus is really just going to ruin your day. And Sad Hippo bans the Stormbringer as his second ban. Which is a fairly respectable choice. Stormbringer of Mara and the Toilet, very hard to deal with. I I'm still trying to figure out these shielded crossbow do so. Is, uh, are we making this a thing just be, uh, I mean, I guess uh, thing with Portals really wants to, to get them back into the meta, get them back into uh, to high GM and showcase I mean, the there worth. Is, the right answers is they are good in when you know your opponent is going to run up with some spell-heavy removal. And you just want that really annoying, sticky board presence, because sure, the crossbow dudes are a real pain to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, the, the shields can be extremely annoying if you don't have the exact correct cards. Mm -hmm. And the last ban comes in, Finger Pulse is going to ban the Morda from Sad Hippo. So that leaves Which... him with the uh, Ravager and the Milloween, versus thinking with Portals, Ratbo, and Milloween. Definitely can see the reasoning behind banning the Mordar. It if you don't take care of the the Resses and the Guardian and mm. all that shenanigans properly, then you can just be overrun and and die. Yeah, it's just it's just a very snowball-y kind of deck, and 
it's not the hardest to deal with in the, in the right hands, but just that threat of losing the entire game off of one bad resurrection, it's enough to consider banning it. Yeah, definitely. Seeing, uh, I'm, I'm so used to seeing cleavers in every single Ravager deck uh, since I played the Tonch Ladder lately, but uh, Hippo deciding to use uh, Wolf Among Sheep as the activator for the Dragon Ball here. Hmm. Uh, I've, I've seen it a couple of times, I think. It was, we did see quite a bit of experimentation with the uh, Wolf Among Sheep post the rework, and it's, it's still a pretty decent card. And it works as an activator to the Dragon Ball now, so if you need some, if you need some high-end spell cards to try and get, uh, well, you can get that Dragon Ball up on the face, you can get the board presence of the Wolf Among Sheep, and obviously having I, that I, fireball is always useful. It's definitely interesting that, I mean, the most in interesting change that came with the the uh, raise the six mana for the Wolf Monk Sheep was that it became an activator for Dragon Ball. Mm. Nowadays, though, with so many people running Fireball and Dragon Ball in their decks, Wolf Monk Sheep may struggle to get value. Yeah, other than that, we do see uh, Think of Portals coming up with uh, quite a few Cleaver Dragon Balls. And that was the one yeah, people that... most uh, generally go towards, is it's... Uh, it's very yeah, defensive, is, uh, but can transition into an offensive push quite easily with the activation. Yeah, that is uh, definitely one of the most popular combinations on ladder right now, I think, and just a very popular combination in uh, in high ranks. Mm. It's it can be such a strong combo if you get your cleaver going, and then you have, especially if you can tank some like small units on face on your side with the cleaver, so you can really save up that mana when and then when the cleaver actually gets to get to the other side of the board. You can support uh, the cleaver with that activated Dragon Ball. You can take out a lot of pesky small units, or just uh, yeah, just provide really strong support. Yeah. Other than that, it's uh, it's interesting the two different directions these Middleween decks have taken. Uh, thinking with Portals, this Middleween deck is more based on just having that Arcane Golem as a backup support. I mean, there's a bunch of cards that are going to help it directly through stuff like the Clear Skies. And obviously he's got that screen he's got the screening scrap to uh get any to get any attention off of it. But yeah, Sack Hippo is uh... much more heavily reliant on that arcane golem, which could be a problem with that lightning bolt. And here we are, we're going in game. First match of the KPC 30. Once we get past this loading screen. And here we go, it's Rappo versus Milloween. Thinking with portals, got a bit of an awkward opening hand here. Probably have to split up these shielded crossbow dudes. Sad Hippo opening with his own crossbow dude to take both of those bridges nice and quick. It always uh, nice to get some early bridge grab for uh, for a few mana. Mm -hmm. Thinking with portals, uh, saving up some mana at the start. Doesn't have to worry too much about any aggression from Sad Hippo, as Miller winning can tend to be a very slow master before that perk free hits. Oh yeah, if. Uh... If uh, Arya can get the Milloween down uh, here a lot with pre perk 3, then uh, maybe Ooh. difficult for Sad Hippo to uh, he come just, back from that. He just drops the cleaver. Yeah. And uh, the toilet will almost be taken out by the infiltration there. Not yeah, completely some... loving that infiltration. I mean, yeah, you may take out the, the uh, crossbow guild more or less, but. Uh, Yeah, this, this cleaver is getting so much value off the start, though. We see the arcane bolt prepped up. Oh, but it goes straight to a werewolf. Uses the one spin to try and get rid of this cleaver. Does so. Werewolf's gonna get some decent cleaver value in here from taking out these indeed units. Does get like a lot of value though for uh, for uh, Arya here, which is a yeah, really good, uh, good start. Route, for him. Not gonna do too much, but Barra on his just own. Delay things. And seeing infusion here. Also, well, Infusion just barely keeps the wolf in alive for another hit, but it's not really going to do much that more in, after that. That Infusion will uh, not really do much, no. Fireball does take out the uh, Barra, though. Of course, we're going to take out quite a few hits from Billwing, getting some chip damage in there. I'm a fan of these Ravenous Swarmers, I have to say. 
uh, we are seeing a uh, golem though slowly start to push uh, bottom. I imagine that uh, Sad Hippo will protect the golem against the cleaver, or not? Uh, no, too <laughs> late on those lost legionnaires. Applies a uh, one's bit into it, which just gets fireballed. So that's a lot yeah. of mana loss for the Sad Hippo there on that there, cleaver. There, the combo really shows the strength of the cleaver pushing in, and then the dragon ball is taking care of all the small uh, small threats. Oh, that Doc is going to tear that guy yeah. in apart. So much damage coming in for that Sad Hippo a, here. Yeah. Very, very good value, Daka, from Aria there. And the Cleaver, oh, almost getting that extra hit in. Almost getting that right. extra hit in, and the Xiao Long shield pops just before that Daggerfall hits by the middle in attack. Fireball does finish off one of the crossbow guilds, but it's not going to do too much. I don't think uh, using that Fireball aggressively is something that Sad Hippo can do here. Yeah, and Millwing's attack hard. is not good against all these small units. It takes a lot of shit damage from what amounted to a bunch of Swarmers and Crossbow dudes. Yes, definitely. And at this point, the, the HP lead is quite severe, and so is the XP lead. This is looking very, very rough for Sad Hippo. Another Dragon Ball just to get rid of those ones bitten Legionnaires. Playing right into thinking with Portal Cycle there. And that is going to finish it off, yeah. yeah that that's was going to be uh, one going to Aria. Milloween did not get even close to the third perk and uh, did not manage to defend uh, those early pushes well at all. Yeah. So that locks in the Rappo for Aria, leaving Sad Hippo just with that Ravager now. I mean, Ravager against Rappo, that's, that's usually kind of favored in Ravager's. Uh, well, it's usually favored towards Ravager, I suppose I should be saying. Well, as, as usual, in my opinion, it does come down to that first perk. If you can't get the Brutus value at mm. uh, perk 1, then you can quickly see yourself losing the game. Yeah, it's just that perk 1 tends to be pretty easy to get some value on against the Rappo, especially with all these yeah, cheap definitely. units Hippo's backing up with. It's a lot of uh, free cost and below cards. Come yeah, on, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that... Uh, I'm sure that Sad Hippo would love to have a Soul Stealer or something of the sort in his Ravager deck right now to just feed off those scrats. Hmm. Fortunately, not going to be the case though. We also see the see. Uh, you'll see the inclusion of a Divine Warrior in that Ravager deck. That's not a card you usually see in Ravager. It's usually just considered well, a bit too defensive for what he wants to do. Yeah, this 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 isn't this isn't looking like a completely uh, face ravager though. This seems like a bit more balanced than some of the ravager decks I've seen lately. But the Wine Warriors, uh, I feel like it's just a card that you just put into every deck nowadays, especially in in high ranks and on ladder. The Wine mm -hmm. Warrior is is so versatile, and you know it it can tank those cleaver hits. It can. Uh, mm -hmm. Protect against any sort of big push for a while, so you can yeah. get extra mana to set up uh, more defense. And here we go into game two. Sad Hippo is spoiling the Grey Wolf Ravager from the Battle Pass. The best Ravager skin, I would say, as well. Quite, quite nice one. Mm, as an avid showdown player, I have to disagree and go with Resort Ravager, but it is a good looking skin. Fair enough. Gonna be, uh. Oh, gonna get some Pellier Scrats up top here, transferred by the Shao. Shao will yeah. also take the bridge. Yep, it will. I didn't it's even realize Arya had crossing forms in the deck. Like I said, it didn't get used last game, but that's going to come in very handy for slowing up that Brutus push. Yeah, and the Grasping Thorns is just such a good value building, I feel. It can be used to, to kill a horde, it can be used to take care of more or less a drone walker as well, take care of the boomer, and here it's it really chipping down uh, that health. Yeah, it's going to use the Protectors Crossbow again, which isn't necessarily the wrong position. We see a Daggerfall from Hippo, which doesn't leave them with much mana to protect Miss Brutus, from what I know. Doesn't the Brutus push here is looking quite naked, though, and if uh, Sad Hippo can't get any support for the Brutus push, that Brutus will just die without getting yeah, any value. Does. He's not going to back it up, and then he's gonna, and Brutus is going to die to Barra, who, with that root and the Beam of Moon... Yeah, the first perk Ravager, uh, quote-unquote, push there, only gets in like a hundred damage or so, which is not what you are looking for as a Ravager. It does pick up Sad Hippo a lot of experience though. We see a major experience lead in the start, but they don't really, yeah, like, that they don't really may... see Ravagers uh, back up a bit See more. the Arcane Bolt though for the first time in, in forever, I feel. Yeah, that card's pretty much exclusively used to get rid of Divine Warriors, so 
That actually makes it pretty good in a competitive setting, because you know people are going to be running that card. Yeah, it does actually get the way more value than uh, I actually thought about, because I, in my mind I forgot about the Divine. Uh, this Barra is getting so a much damage coming damage. in from Barra. Oof. And the, I'm imagining it's going to be... Well, no Dragon Ball coming in to take care of those before Barra is killed. Hmm. Did That's have the mana for it. I think it's actually doing 10 more damage than what it's supposed to. That's something interesting I'll have to look and see. It's supposed to do exactly the plugs direct tournaments. <laughs> My job never ends. Multi multitasking at a high level here. <laughs> those crossbow dudes really just uh, massacring those uh, those scrats. They don't really get to yeah, do much. Especially, with, especially that Xiao Long. Oh, the preemptive Barra into the Divine Warrior. That's got to hurt. Also, Most the of that shield just has completely been, uh, wasted. Has been evened out and is now in Arya's favor. So that XP lead did not last too long for uh, for Sad Hippo, and now he's at a pretty decent HP disadvantage, and is facing a almost full health cleaver. Oh, Uma oh, only hits a single strat. Not what you want there. And cleaver does connect the face, and Arya does not have the Dragon Ball to take care of those. Uh, both one sheep immediately, but still a lot of damage being dealt on face there. Yeah, now that they've split up, which is when the card becomes really annoying, but the Grasping Thorns should sort them out. Grasping Thorns will do a lot back there. On the top lane, but just slow down, just slow so down much. everything. But there goes that Frenzy Wolf, it's on face, it's gonna Ooh. kill, it's gonna kill that crossbow guild really fast. The screen is grab, pulling it back into the Grasping Thorns though, excellent usage of the taunt there. Oh yeah, that is that is one of the uses of Screaming Scrat that I've really started loving uh, since the uh, the Thorns got into the game. Really Such clever good, uh... usage there. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Another bar oh, being played. He the hold into the barra. That is Locked a lot of being force. being wasted on the Scrat there. Probably wanted to hit face. Yeah, Those crossbow so dudes though, just chipping for... away. Not, uh, not being taken out. Poor Ravager can't reach. He's gonna deploy the wolf among sheep. And Hopefully they do not have everyone to that barrier though, because that could be kind of disastrous. I'll I just get like, fired uh, anyways. Thinking with portals here, definitely holding that Dragon Ball way longer than I would, than I would uh, suspect. It does let that wolf among sheep take the bridge, uh, even though it is quickly cool, cool taken back. Oh, the arcane bolt's brutal. Just gets rid of that divine warrior instantly. Yeah, and, and it's also a neutral trade, like. I think Reportals is not losing any mana doing that. Sad Hippo looking like he's gonna dive to, from uh, death by a thousand cuts here with all these crossbow dudes. One more Dragon Ball or a good Daka, and it's over. Yeah, I think Dragon that's gonna Ball be it. Be in hand uh, very soon here. Dag Daggerfall not gonna do anything. taking Sad Hippo out. Death by crossbow Aria dudes. Takes, Can't Aria feel takes good. a set 2-0. Yeah. Very well Can't... played. Well played by uh, by Arya here. Not uh, necessarily surprising to me. I've seen uh, Arya play in in ranked a good bit lately, and uh, definitely a skilled player. Well, we've seen a lot of improvement from them over the last few weeks, and it definitely shows there. That was a dominating performance. Yeah, not in in neither of the games uh, was he anywhere close to uh, to being dead or taking uh, any sort of lethal damage. Had, the closest uh, they really got was the uh, frenzied werewolf there, but with the uh, with a good application of the screening scrap and the grasping thorns, that uh, diffused the threat pretty effectively. Yeah, the the wolf also got uh, got hooked on on the gill, not on face, which might not have been the ideal thing that uh, Arya wanted there, but still worked mm -hmm. out more than well enough. All right. So we're going to be trying to find another game to hop into while this round one of the Swiss circuit goes on. We'll see you guys yeah. shortly.
All right, so it's a bit of quick casting here. We've got Decimus versus Solid Spirit. Decimus looking pretty roughed up about four minutes into the game here. You know, Solid Spirit. Decimus going to have to get a lot of bridge control in here if he wants to try and take this game back. Fortunately, we cannot see which bridge is marked. Blame FDM. I have to assume it's the one he's competing the most for, though. So that would likely be the bottom bridge. Dragon Mob's gonna start beating him up on the face if to drop a stint to protect himself, but still takes 150 from it. He's getting very vulnerable to the Setsu. There we go, managed to fix the Spectre bug as well. Yep, and there's the Setsu and... jump. And the infiltration, oh. and that's gonna be a quick KO there. Managed to, uh, to jump in just in time to see uh, the end. <laughs> Classic. Alright, we'll continue hopping into more games before the next round starts. Alright, welcome back guys. Sorry for the short delay there, but we're back with round two of the Swiss stage. First up, we've got a bit of a recap of the last round to go through though. Let me see if I can get these uh, scores to update properly. Uh, challenge can... not to challenge, tournament can be a bit weird sometimes in regards to that, so... It can... All right, so we've got Cat 2 owing Pura, Grey Wolf 2 owes Toxic, Video Gamer 2 owes Depth Slave, Rhinoceros 2 owes Why So Die, Memphisto 2 owes Degioso, TGX Andy 2 owes In Joker, uh, Darian right now it's reporting for me as a win, win against J Boy 10. Imagine the scores will update soon enough on that. Aria, as we saw, 2 owes Sad Hippo. Sold Spirit 2 ones Decimus. Katsui takes a win against Chevron, and JF takes a win against Brainless and Courage. Kelgaroff 2 owes Divine. Lazur 2 owes Hugh Equem. Fandom Man 2 owes Von Slacken. Touch Me I'm Fluffy 2 owes the Dover Nation. Kishin 2 ones Tim 202. Hazard Bomber 2 owes Tomato Mato. Floforian 2 owes Villain Razor. Shin gets a win against Regabe. And Archster got a bye. Going on into uh, round two, we will be watching Grey say, Wolf uh, versus Flo Florian. I just like giggle when you uh, said touch me, I'm fluffy. Can't lie. <laughs> but uh, I don't think... Uh, These names get I, wilder every tournament. I definitely do. I think from the score side, I don't think there were uh, too many surprising results here in the first round. Hmm. Oh, I know. Actually, I think when I did my uh, when I did the Wednesday Sprite Fights two v two, I'm pretty sure someone signed up with an inappropriate team name just to try to get me speaking on stream. But they never <laughs> ended up being on stream, thankfully. I don't think it's they appropriate for this stream to even mention that. So, I'm All sure right. people back then will know which one I was talking about. Well, we do have the decks, and, uh... and we have the bands as well. Starting off early, Gradle quickly decides to ban Millween from Floy Florian. Really not hard to see why. Magma Storm, is... Fire and Divine Warrior, Bridge Shrine, Clear Skies, Grasping Thorns. Definitely does not want to have to that's, deal with. Uh, that's Herc an anti fun uh, deck right there, yeah. Perk 3, Clear Skies, Golems. And getting there super fast with the Bridge Shrine, I would not want to play against that either, honestly. Uh, if you get behind, you'll quickly uh, see your demise. Yeah, just as I expected, Flo Florian bans Grey Wolf's million as well. Also, the tides to take out that Volko. It's a very cheap Volko. Just to yeah, pick I've up seen the a, map mechanic. Pretty sure I've seen Grey Wolf play this exact Volko deck in previous tournaments, maybe even the KPC. Hmm. And uh, been been playing quite well and uh, definitely giving results with it. It's an interesting pickup of the Magma Cannon. I've actually seen this card, seen quite a bit of experimentation lately. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it can be quite a good defensive card for Wilco, or even halfway offensive if you want to support like a push on the bridge or something other like. Mm. But mostly defensive. So it comes down to that versatility. And that combustion, combustion that can be uh, I mean, I don't know know necessarily where that combustion would go. But it could be useful. I think just throw it out whenever. You get some additional anti air. And we see I Grey Wolf tying it out strats, with maybe. banning the Mordar from Flo Florian, which is a uh, Harbinger and Colossus kind of deck. 
Ah, uh, yes, the, the a very high value res Mordar there. I mean, I do see the Colossus, which is uh, one reason for me to be quite sad that it is banned. <laughs> Would love to see that in tournament play. Is this deck is quite similar to uh, the a Mordor deck I've been playing on ladder lately. Yeah, well, definitely that. Uh, Florian, not exactly a new player, so we got plenty of opportunity oh, to watch them in future matches. Oh yeah, Flo Florian has uh, has shown a good form uh, the last few months, I believe. Seen him mm -hmm. play quite well. Before we very consistently. So that leaves Sir Florian with the Stormbringer and the King Puff up against Grey Wolves, Apep, and Ratbo. We've seen Apep. Right. Not only have we seen Apep, we've seen Apep with Future Present. That's a thing that hasn't been, uh, hasn't really been a thing for a while now. Apep, man. I mean, uh, if I was uh, Flo 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 Florian, wow, tongue, tongue twisters, I would just ban the Apep straight out. You still ban Apep? I have a personal bias, I have to admit, but. Uh, I just really don't like Apep. Like, if if he gets a good perk one, and when he gets that perk two, he can just deny damage, especially with a decent cycle. This is this is, mm. is the cheapest Apep, but still cheap enough. And if he gets a good present that counters your deck, or just a good perk three, then that that can be a nightmare to face as more or less any deck. Mm. It just feels like Apex too slow these days. Like he's been kind of pushed out of the meta just by how aggressive these Ravagers can be. And obviously, well, definitely, if you face like an, an all in, if you face an all in perk one Ravager, then uh, yeah, you might not survive that or, or get to perk mm. one uh, or My God. perk two. But outside of the complete 100% face Ravagers, I mean, Apep can still be very, very good. And that uh, second perk and vulnerable totem is uh, exceedingly strong, I would say. Hmm. And we also see a Crystal Construct picked up in our Apep deck, which I find very interesting. Definitely. I That's not a card I've seen much of at all in, in not, not in tournament play, not on ladder. It's I, in a not few of these really. usages. It's, it's still After pretty the... decent in Mordor because you get the extra mana back on a Resurrection. And I guess it is like decent in Mordor, but still this, uh... not really a card that has seen much play at all since the nerf. Mm. Before the nerf, it saw tons of play, obviously, but after the nerf hasn't seen a lot of uh, play in uh, high ranks or uh, mm. in tournaments yeah i, I, I can understand here, why gray will put it in this deck though it's uh obviously it triggers apex passive which he he's he's gone on record in the past as saying very strong that's uh just in general to have on apex and not only that it's technically a pseudo four mana card provides a nice little wall with something like the xiao long and those plasma marines to stick behind yeah, definitely. I, I would imagine the construct would be used ninety five percent as a tanking minion to to provide support for the, the for the marines for the Shaolong, any other potential present uh, minion you may get or free minion you would get from perk one or three. Hmm. All right, so we'll just be waiting to start. We're waiting in the startup. I boo. I would predict Grey Wolf opens with the Apep, just I because would, that one is agree. the least consistent of the two decks, just based on the amount of RNG that could happen in it. And just having the Meme Storm in there as well, or Magma Storm. Yeah, you don't Can, want to be stuck uh, with an Apep you have to win two games with. No. It's exactly interesting to see. Uh, or bring out the Banana Apep. I uh, like it. Not, not even the Toxic one. Bananas. Banana Apep's the best one. Fight me. I mean, oh, when I he gets the future president in his opening hand, might see him well, pop that right at the we'll start. Probably roll that uh, early, yeah. That's probably what. I think he's on the field. Might as well there. gets a free combustion. Combustion that... itself not the most useful, but the free card basically takes I a mean, card out of his be, deck. It would be good cycle at the very least. May not get the most value out of the combust itself though. But he is running propeller scrats, for example. Ooh, that's a good point. The propeller scratch synergizes very well with combustion, as we yeah, all can... know by this point. Oh yeah, that can make uh, some juicy plays and ooh, tries to get it. But does get oh, it on wait, the wait, as well, though. Wait, what? It's still detonated. Yeah, it was also on the construct. Oh, I, uh... he played it just in time. Yeah, just perfectly so that a construct. Uh, that's. A very good use for Construct, surprisingly, in this match. He has the free combust, so just 
play the construct, mm -hmm. play the combust, and let it walk into into the enemy and detonate. See them if... trading fairly even right now, though. The scepter. Look for it. Actually, had an assassin down here. Trying to get the soul stealer some uh, some stacks here. Dropping um, out that mag storm. Does not we'll want to deal with that soul stealer. If uh, KP, I mean KP is definitely looking to get to second perk ASAP here. One's mm. probably pushed down. I mean, if I was this KP, I would just try to get my second perk as soon as possible and then just DPS Grey Wolf's APEP down before he gets any value from his totem and especially third perk. Yeah, it's a nice divine worry that combustion is everything. Uh, I think that's a little bit overkill for some. some I suppose drug he just wanted to, probably just wanted to clear the board. Just wanted the matter there. <laughs> Maybe the propeller scratch could have done that themselves, but... Maybe so, uh, Mother just clicked drop, drop in the there. general vicinity of the propeller scratch and also hit the defense by accident. Yeah. Can't we do see, here, by uh... the way, he gets, that, uh, he gets the Elite Swarmer off of perk 1. That's a great pickup for an Apex to have. Another free bridge grab, small tanking unit. Place the combust again. again. The and will mm. not take out the Soul Stealer there. Close, though. Short for a giant monkey wrench in that plan. And both Still have second perk now. Some experience, and now he gets that second perk, which means he can start tanking a whole matter of damage. And now it, I think it will be exceedingly difficult for for Florian to get a lot of damage in on Gravels at this point, especially mm. with having the cycle that he has. That shield will be up quite often. That combustion does not do anything. It probably just wanted it out of his hand though. The enraged propeller horde though. The uh, uh the de facto well, the win condition like for a lot of KP decks. Did not Is it? I, I generally find the shield propeller horde to be way scarier to deal with. Well yeah, I I mean card itself, obviously I would agree that the uh the shielding is better. One but but that card in of itself does win a lot of games on its own. Magma Storm throw out. If we're missing so things, Gator, we only got one scrap out of that scrap pack. Does hit the Soul Stealer there. And one on the defensive as well, I believe. For Florian trying to keep XP advantage here, wants to get to that third perk, I imagine, and just push Grey Wolf. But gonna be very, very hard to just get any damage done with the Ooh, shield nice and the construct. The Construct uh, Combustion combo is just so damaging because you can't kill it in time before it detonates, really. Yeah, so it looks like the Florian didn't have any one. activators available for that Propeller Horde. Very well even using the Elite Swarmer to tank a tiny bit of face damage here and there just to, to deny any sort of uh, damage on, on APEP. Trying to get a few stacks on his Soul Stealer here. Morgul gonna take out those Marines, bottom lane, take the bridge. For Florian getting very close to his third perk. And yeah, Shield will just... Perk. I don't think it matters too much in this matchup, honestly. Not like, too much, Grimm's no. Like, really not nice doing much have. face damage to begin with. In, in, to me, it's more of uh, denying Grey Wolf his third perk more than getting his own third perk. But that, that totem, that shield, just Ugh. tanks so much damage. That combustion was so good against the propeller hold there. Oh yeah, definitely. It also really helps having an illo cleaver against... If it's not shielded, then you lose four mana to one. Yeah, so still a bang a bit off a bit more than they could chew there. The construct There's... getting the finishing blow on the defenso there. Well, first, Construct that Getting can kill something. Some Ooh, nice oh. combustion on the propeller hole there. There's Grey Wolf's damage, and he gets a free Priestess. Actually, I think that's that... really useful in this matchup. Especially with the Construct, yeah. That well, can be quite, quite, quite good. Great propeller hold, but... It's going to be very hard for Florian to do much here, though. Ooh. I mean, he has the, the Illo Cleaver. He has the Combust. Like, these Look hordes the are not doing cycle coming up from Grey Wolf. Yeah, he's just gonna be able to really just push and deny any sort of face damage on onto himself here. Yeah, the shield's that gonna hurricane be up so often. Saw from the defense, so taken out the propeller horde. The Florian really just only wants those shield of propeller hordes at this point, or it's gonna get nothing done. And that Shao as well, just pewing away. It's another rage one. Long time here. 
the construct tanking up a lot of damage here. K KP does get his vulnerability, so uh, does save himself a lot of health there. But still, taking a lot of face damage. Did not get that defensive push on bridge to do a little bit more damage. Yeah, and Priestess Wolf... though, keeping the Elite Swarmer alive longer than... Uh, yeah, and this Elite Wolf. Swarmer is so useful for Grey Wolf, how fast he can cycle out. We see him drop a Magma Storm here. Does they... not get rid of that Soul Stealer though. Misses every single shot, didn't even need the shield there, but now, I mean, again, Grey Wolf has his totem. Face oh. damage is just not really going to happen. But Florian again gets the wrong Propeller Horde. He doesn't want the Rage Mode at this point in the game, it's not letting him hold onto the board. Hasn't played enough to the RNG gods. Ahead in life. If Fulfurian can get to Frenzy here, he does have a shot, but it is looking quite rough, in my opinion. This combustion on the Crystal Contract is proving to be so useful too. Yeah, and that free Priestess and just everything. Apep definitely got some good RNG rolls this game. I mean, it's only been seven minutes. This game is going, uh, going the, uh, the whole it mile. It does look like it's going to go to Manny Frenzy, though. Great Wolf is having issues closing this game out. And he's not managing to catch up completely in XP either. He may face an issue here if he can't deny the XP uh, for Flo Florian. Yeah, all well, these rage minions for Flo Florian is just so good at actually taking care of the stuff on his face. Stacking like the priest and stuff, though, just could be what he needs if he can get the through the face of that. Construct will never die at this point if the priestess is. He can't even alive. kill the priestess! Oh, there's an assassin in there though, but it hits the assassin construct! That's a lot of damage there. The combustion will take care of most of those units. Grail is stacking priestess up out, so much stuff down on his bottom lane. This could Another be the non that seals it. It needs to be for him. It Takes a top bridge up, the invis is gone! Flip forward, taking critical damage here from the Xiao Longer. That's gonna be it! Just one final push from Grey Wolf, stacking up those priestesses, finally brute forces his way through all of those rage minions. That was, uh, that was, uh, I would say that also pretty good RNG for uh, Grey Wolf and not a lot of good RNG for Florian with the, uh, with the horde rolls and, uh... Oh, well, it was working out for him towards the end there. He was holding off pretty well despite being on only a couple of points, a hundred points of health. If he hit Mana Frenzy and was able to do something about it, that game was yeah, in the back have, for him, but... Could have turned the game around if he had gotten to Frenzy there. The Grey Wolf just shooting the drop hold, all of his cycle on that bottom lane and stack up those priestesses. Complete nuisance that Flo Florian couldn't deal with. Yeah, just getting that free priestess when you have that construct, you have the combustion. Like, you can, you, you can combust the construct and heal it up to full health again with multiple priestesses and combust again and again and again. Now like an endless train. Alright, so I mean, Grey Wolf is going to be stuck with though. the Apep as we go into game two. So be Florian will be, uh, he'll, will be playing the... If I can read here. So Florian is stuck with the Stormbringer, yeah. My does have the Crossbow Guild, does have the Barra in there, Fireball, Daggerfall. Hmm. We'll see how it stacks up against the, uh... The APEP. Yeah, it's I my would, uh, tends to be a fairly even matchup between the two of them. Neither strength really it, outclasses the other. I think it's this storming your deck isn't looking like a super temple one. Uh, so I think it's going to be difficult for uh, Florian to uh, to potentially take care of this APEP if Grey Wolf keeps that XP lead and gets his perks, gets the value, gets a decent present. I think it's gonna be very hard for Florian to uh, to, to take the second game here. Mm. Then again, Grey Wolf might make a few missteps, or Florian may make a giant push at some point. We'll see how it ends up going. The bar I can do a lot of work, obviously, as seen uh, in the last series. Not sure how much work the uh, Crossbow Guild will do here, though. Versus with the APEP deck here. Speaking of experience, Crossbow Guild is very annoying if I don't have an aggressive deck to try and take it out. And I mean, Grey Wolf is pretty much resort after resort to magma storming it every time it comes down. Otherwise, the pressure is going to put on those bridges is going to effectively lock him out. He does not have many good ways to deal with that Crossbow Guild outside of it. But if you are playing APEP and you uh, you have that RNG locked in, then <laughs> you'll hit that magma storm every single time. <laughs> 
Here we go, the match starts. Lithorian dropping out the uh the Dark Fury Stormbringer. The best Stormbringer skin. No doubt. Yeah, definitely. So sexy. Gonna probably see, see a present wall again. 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 Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. That's... He does not want an infusion. That is going to be interesting. Two mana infusion, uh what is the played here? I don't think it's what he was looking oh. for. Actually, the Xiao can tank that. I guess the that's Archers what he's supposed will... to use of it. it. I suppose it is. The Archers will probably take care of the Xiao, though, unless they are taking it out. No, Xiao will go down one. here. This is, uh, this is not a good start for Grey Wolf, being 20 experience behind like this to a Stormbringer. Yeah, the present did not roll in his oh. favor there. Well, Frory just keeps not punishing take... Grey Wolf. I don't think he's held the bridges once so far. Falling very far behind in XP, he needs to hit this meme storm. And does, he is gonna does hit, hit it, the uh, toilet like, there, does take it out. But still, yeah. like, he hasn't got much way to start this catch up with. To Florian. And we'll take the top bridge again, just to, to deny as much XP as possible here for Grable. Construct will keep that bridge for a while. Has to play the construct into a grasping form, it's not gonna feel good. And the bar uh, just gonna melt to that. We're almost at part two here. for Florian. Getting it at about one and a half minutes. You think it was a on the boomer. Free boomer as well. It's really bad against the Stormbringer. Yeah. And then okay. in combination with the uh, infusion, that is not going to do much. Yeah, we get a Bridge Shrine-esque timing for the part two on Stormbringer. Oh Pretty yeah, much does not have the mana or the means to pressure, deal with all this. Continual pressure going to be coming out from the crossbow guild. Maybe taken out again though by the magma storm. If it hits, one does hit, and uh, yeah, let's take it out again. Still though, quite far behind in XP and uh, a bit behind in HP as well now. He definitely wants yeah, that second chip and this come game. in. I don't know how Grail comes back from this. This is such a bad start for him. If he manages and to get his second perk well, here and deny the some uh, some face damage continuously, and uh, if he manages to get his third perk one day and gets a good roll, then he does have a chance, but uh, not the best start. He is I... starting to catch up a bit in XP, though. Not a I feel lot, like the game's stuff. just going to be over before then, though. Like, the amount of chip damage Definitely Florian's going to get be. and the extra range on these minions. But it like, does have shield now, though. How does anything players get across the bridge? He is catching up a bit in XP, and with the shield, he can uh, face tank a lot moving forward. Maybe, but Boomer he's face tanking, that's not going to get him the bridges. Screaming Scratch does not distract those marines in time. Another crossbow guild placed bottom in the exact same spot, and again, the exact same response from Grey Wolf, and is taken out with ease. Yeah, a lot more timely this time. This is what he needed earlier on in the game, but... Well, he is slightly catching up. The experience I'm difference sitting has Sitting at around scored. 20 XP behind right now, but is definitely catching up in the XP game uh, compared to uh, to the first minute or so. Yeah, just you see that? The so. Florian slowing down quite a bit, actually. This is giving Grey Wolf a bit of room to catch up. Yeah, I would, uh, would not be... Uh, be looking to give Grey Wolf any more XP than he already has right now. If Florian can get his third perk soon here and get that uh, board pressure from Stormbringer, and that can uh, definitely help him out here to just Grey ping just away. Lack of removal outside that Magma Storm is really showing though. He just can't remove half of these Stormbringer units. Again, trying to hit that Magma Storm on the... Oh, not oh, a single one hit! Every single ball there. That's, that that has to hurt. He pings it with an okay, uh, okay hand there. Thumbs up. Clearly not happy about how that uh, magma storm landed. Now it will be a lot of pressure coming Grable's way. I, I, I don't see how he comes back from this. Not with the double storm ring of bolts now. He has to get like a. Not for now though. Finally nails with that magma storm, but that puts him behind. Ten mana for six. That's not the trade you're looking for. We need to get the four with it. Like, I suppose. If he gets a godly third perk roll here, he, he might be able to claw his way back. But he's. I, I, uh, I can't even good. think of a third perk roll that would save him here. You know, I don't rough. think even. Like, normally the good ones would just. Uh, Bridge Ryan that's too far behind in this one. I don't think he'd catch up. 
Bats, 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 um, it's just gonna can. die to the Stormbringer. I don't yeah, think anything and saves him here. And definitely not a musket here. And again, the guild's not being and hit. And again! Oh, 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 the last one hits it, but that's not enough. It and this musketeer is just not gonna be good enough against the Stormbringer. Yeah, and it doesn't... Florian doesn't have any units that is countered completely by uh, musketeer either. So it's not gonna get to do much. And the XP lead uh, is at around 20-30 overall, but uh, Florian is getting closer and closer to Frenzy. If Beryl cannot do something right now, this game is uh, looking quite lost for him. I don't think there is anything he can do. That just the bat starts your snowballing out of control. Yeah, and that storming just pinging away at everything on the board, including his own health pool. Is, Out uh... Outside of the defensive chopper and the, the, uh, the uh, crystal construct, there's really nothing Hitting that can everything. tank up these Stormbringer bolts too. Definitely, and we all know man. how annoying that can be. Yeah, the, the board presence and the, the board control that uh, Florian is getting with the Stormbringer third perk here is uh, really quite strong. And unless Scrape can mount like a, a gigantuan push, then there's nothing he can do at this point. I mean, even, uh. even if it gets like a massive push going, there is too much control and uh, DPS from Florian's side, I just don't think he can get anything done here. Only 20 XP away from Frenzy on Florian's side. And like Great I said, Wolf. how's anything get across the bridge from Grey Wolf? Just the yes, Grasping King... Forms and all of these range units and the Daggerfall, nothing gets well, through it. Those can, just archers with the range and crossbow dudes with the range, Bara with range, and yeah, the thorns and everything just keeping everything at a nice, good distance, and it's deeping essing it all down. Even that defense, though, is just not doing anything. Like, the Musketeer yeah. is, doesn't really get to do much, especially against the Storming Ping here. His health pool doesn't last long. Yeah, and we're hitting mana frenzy here, these crossbow guilds know. are gonna start coming out en masse. There's nothing yeah. Grey Wolf can do to contest it. Uh, it is way too late. Did not uh, yeah, Grey Wolf just game. AFK to get 10 mana. The game's over. Yeah. He recognizes that. Just an unfortunate yeah, bad uh, early game start, which... Blue Florian the really counts The present on. is uh, probably one of the worst... Yeah, probably one of the worst cards you can get there, I think. I don't can't think of too many other cards that would be really, really sad about getting from the present. Generally that expensive doesn't... cards. Really don't want to get cards that cost more than 6 mana. From the present I mean, in the deck like that. If I got a seven mana losses, I would be kind of happy, personally. But uh, yeah, definitely one of the worst present rolls there. And then also not getting the best first perk with the boomer, especially in conjunction with the uh, infusion as well. Not this Apep not rolling his way and uh, not giving him any room to uh, to get any push going or any sort of bridge control really to uh, claw yeah. his way back. So that's going to leave it to Stormbringer versus Ratbo. This is looking pretty good for Grey Wolf though, because he's got that Scrap Tank. And the Scrap Tank is just so good against the Stormbringer. Oh yeah, it definitely is. He also has the Chain Lightning to, to take out Archers or any other sort of ranged unit. I mean, he can also just take out a full squadron of the dudes, crossbow dudes, and also hit the guild as well. He can just go the entire length from your face to the enemy uh, enemy face. Definitely. And it's just the uh, the natural matchup between Rappo and Stormringer. Just a few too many targets when it gets to late game for Stormringer to really deal with this good cycle. And yeah, the Strats will tank up a lot of those Stormringer pings, especially early game for that perk three hits, if the perk three even hits. I mean, he also has some tanky units again, of course, as you mentioned, the Scrat Tank, but also the Warrior can tank a bit. Morgul can tank a decent bit. So Storming of Pings won't be doing too much. I see the interesting inclusion of the Crystal Arcanist in the Rapbo deck, actually. Yeah, not Very Crystal I cards even... in general aren't ones you're going to see in Rapbo because he doesn't like having a high amounts of man like that. But an Arcanist as well, I'm wondering what that's for. I suppose he just wants some AoE that can hit air and can provide some uh, long range uh, support potentially. Maybe behind the, the Scrat Tank or the Warrior, even the Morgul. Hmm. Have something that can uh, just help a push going and just get that long range support DPS. 
Maybe. Florian also doesn't uh, have a Shao here to... Uh, I was just thinking about Chain Lightning into Shao, but it doesn't have it. So that's not going to be an issue uh, for Grey Wolf either. All right, here we go in game. It's Zombie Terminator, a Rappo coming up from Grey Wolf. One of the better Rappo skins. Seen. Yeah, that's Zombie Terminator, Rappo. Best Again opening for Florian. Florian. Opens up with the Scrap Pack. The arguably the best opening in the game. Streaming Scrap, they're going to take Bottom Bridge back. Mm. Eh. I don't think it is the best opening in the game because if your opponent just plays like Plasmarines or Crossbow Dudes, you're really sad. But still, though, one mana to grab bridges, even if it's just for a tiny bit, pretty good value. Mm. The Chain Lightning there takes care of those uh, Spirit Throwers immediately. And yeah. the Morgul is free to hit face, like getting decent DPS on face right now. Yeah, for Florian, his deck's so defensive though, I don't think he cares too much. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about best opening plays, I think that still goes to Lost Legion as though. I don't think anything in its mana range can really contest that effectively, and take both bridges back. Sure, I mean, it depends on, on decks and all that. I mean, I wouldn't be too confident, though, with being for Florian here, if he just lets himself take too much face damage. That I warrior mean, will tank up a lot tank. of, uh... It's hard to even get across the stuff. bridge against the Stormbringer. The, his best counter to the guild is the Chain Lightning, I believe. Which is not a proper counter to it. Hmm. Lara coming Man, out. Is this is the combination of the bar and the fawns. Floyd Florian's deck excels at just holding stuff on that bridge, making sure nothing gets close to his face after that initial mogul. And the propeller scratch did not grab the bridge there either bottom. Can't be happy about that. Arcanist will come out here to provide some support DPS, but Daggerfall comes down, and just takes it out, and hits the face. Well. Daggerfall, it's a problem with and the cards. Abara, Nice distraction there to tank a Barra hit, but Barra is doing a lot of damage on on the face and on, <laughs> on any units that Grey Wolf puts out. Grey Wolf lost a warrior amount of HP early on against the Flo Florian here. The experience is not even HP. though. Yeah, it's completely even on XP. We'll go in, into a slight favor for Florian here though if it keeps these bridges, which he probably will with a guild out. It comes that place down again though. We'll right, hold... that chain lightning. I'd really like to see here take out that uh, crossbow guild and the archers. Yeah, will be a... there, there we go. It does play it, and it does not go on face. Thankfully, oh, it will the, be awkward. I, yeah, you don't want to go on face there. It's really high value. Darka will take out the warrior. Decent value, Darka there. But the tank is just not getting even halfway onto the bridge. It's being DPS down. Yeah, it's the wall of that divine warrior, and then there's the uh, the bar coming in as well with the roots. And they go grasping fawns after that. This deck is first, not yeah. aggressive enough to get through all of this. Well, there's so much range DPS and like really high value range DPS as well. Getting so mm. much value from the crossbow dudes and the Barra has done a lot of face damage. Grath, they will tank up a Barra hit, which is quite good. We'll kill your Connor, crystal so. Connor, just to distract the Barra there. Not, not something you want to do. And we'll lose the Annihilator to a Fireball, which is not you can something lose the Fireball, but Scrap Tag finally pushing its way across the bridge. It decides to not even try and contest that Crossbow Guild. The, the, the Divine, though, is just gonna keep that push uh, halted for a decent while, allowing Florian to uh, get more range DPS on it. Yeah, Grill's given up on contesting this Crossbow Guild. He's just gonna take yeah, it out his own way. Chain Lightning does take care of Marines there, but then Florian just places down Archers. He does and place Barra down the Archers, again. Florian did take quite a bit of damage out of that push, and it's kind of exposed a bit of a weakness of Florian, that with his current deck cycle, the Scrap Tank can just roll across the other bridge to cross the is and on with relative ease. We're now he has see builds on both lanes. lanes. We'll also have to see if Florian adapts to uh, protect himself better against any... Uh, Tank push coming. Uh, now, it's a nice dark like, there. Scrap tank tanking up most of that. Shout and then rage Shao along with that scrap tank tank up for it. Or it's going to be feeling the pain perfectly now. there to be enraged by the dagger full play. Oh, it's a full health scrap tank reaching face as well. Florian's in a bit supporting. of trouble. There. Oh, Stint will not take out Marines in time to save the Shao, but still getting. 
500 plus damage on face here, and Grey Wolf hasn't lost too much HP the last time. It's a great adaptation from him, seeing that opportunity at the scrap tank, and now he's going to start barreling it along that top lane. He knows Florian's having trouble keeping up with this aggression from him. The mana just isn't there to defend against all of this. And now with third perk for Ratbo, those three scrats will keep coming out left, right, and center. And uh, if this game goes Ooh. on for uh, too many more minutes, even if Gurgle Girl doesn't push and do any damage to Florian. So Frenzy really good is not gonna be... the Grey Wolf. Took out all the spear throwers and that Grasping Fawn and really let them push through once the Florian's face. Florian was really relying on that Grasping Fawn staying up a lot longer than it actually did. Does get a decent value uh, Chain Lightning there, but... Florian is looking to be in a bit of trouble here, especially with the XP advantage going more and more heavily into Grey Wolf's favor. He has to be worried goes about... Down again early. Grindel's got so many incidental AoE effects here to take that out. And the tank just... Ta well, it just tanks Barra's hits and, and takes by no the time damage. Before he gets that fireball out on the Annihilator, it's got so much value. And look nice at that chain lightning. lightning go. They take out all those ranged units. Great advantage up. It keeps this push going on. I, I don't know how Fafori can catch up from it. I think that even if Grey Wolf doesn't uh, get much more damage on face uh, right now, he can just play the XP game and fairly comfortably reach Frenzy before uh, Florian, I think. Yeah, so he's having a bit of troubles though. For Florian might have adapted it in kind. He's removing all the support yeah. that Scrap Tank has. Saving that Fireball for the Annihilator time and time again. Getting slight mana value there. Tank not getting past Bridges this time. Gonna be yeah, a tank with the line. The path of the crossbow guild again, which means all though. that extra DPS Even from the space. crossbow dudes. Chain lightning did uh did get a decent amount of value there. Shao gonna be taken out. Dark now the aggression's gonna... coming from Florian. He's starting to catch up bit by bit, but is it enough? Great also only 15 experience away from the mana frenzy at this point. And with but our targets just how long, and it's a dangle to get rid of that crystal arcanist. Uh, as soon as the Xiao is off the board, they all Nile is placed down there. once again. Fireball taken out by Lair. Another fireball for Florian. He's only 10 Basically, experience ahead. Grable's just barely trying to hang onto the lead he's developed now. Yeah, just, just doing everything he can to keep these bridges, get to Mana Frenzy right now, so Florian will not have a chance to catch up. Looking like he'll just barely make it over the finish line, though. Frenzy is just a few seconds away. And Grey Wolf will reach it in. Yeah, now. this is Rappo Frenzy, arguably the strongest Frenzy in the game. Can Florian hold off against this? Grey Wolf even tanking uh, mana here. Not playing anything, even though he, uh, he could. He wanted that mana surge on the construct. And it is one of the, the, the uh, downsides of the crystal cards when you get to mana frenzy is that. It could oh, be yeah. quite hard to hang on to that mana surge effect. Which good dock on the Barra, and also good chain lightning on top there before taking out the ranged units. And now with an enraged Shao on the face, continual yeah, pressure on the face. It's nice and steady, just playing out these mid range cards, not trying Scrap to get tank. as many scraps on the field as possible. Actually losing the, the Annihilator to the Thorns though. Yeah, that looks it's like still... it's going to be it. The Scrap Tanks the connect tank the face. Yeah. Grey will take the, the set the two one. Can. A very close set all around, but Grey Wolf's adaptation in the mid game let him hold onto the bridges just long enough to get an advantage that was insurmountable for Florian. Florian had like a, had a, he had a lot of I mean good plays of role in that game. I mean he did save the Fireball to take out the Annihilator time and time again, getting a few mana in value here, there, and everywhere, and it did play a solid game overall, but. Just did not manage to get to Frenzy at the same time. If he would have managed to get to Frenzy at the same time as Grey Wolf, it would have been interesting. Uh, interesting mm. end to that game. All right. So we'll just be tying up this round real quick, and then going into round three. I believe that was the last match of the round. So hopefully it won't be too long until then. All right. We'll then. see you guys in a few. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So that was the longest match of round two. So we got a nice bunch of results to go through before we hop right into round three, keeping up with that action. 
So Aria 2 0 Archster, JF 2 0 Rhino Zeros, Laser 2 1 to Kishin, Sold Spirit 2 1 Fandaman, Cat 2 0 Hazard Bomber, while Grey Wolf, as we saw, 2 1 Flo Florian, Video Gamer 2 1's Katsui, while Mephisto 2 0's Kelgaroth, TGX Andy 2 0's Touch Me I'm Fluffy, while Dirian 2 0's Shin, Wiso Dai took a win over Decimus, and Chevron took a win over Tim, Dirian. A Divine, 2-1's J-Boy, 10, or Dodova Nation, 2-0's Sad Hippo, Brainless Encourage, 2-1's Rega Babe, or Pura gets a win on Fury Equem, Von Slacken, 2-1's Toxic, or Tomato, Mato, 2-0's Death Slave, Villain Razor, 2-0's Digioso, and then Joker gets a bye. And we'll be going on to round three, which will be Video Gamer 77 versus TGX Andy. Indeed, the, the one and only gamer. Yeah, and we got those uh, we got those bands coming in fast. Actually, both of these players, of course, as we saw from the start of the stream, are quite high-ranking players in terms of the circuit so far. So this should be a good one. TGX Andy banning the Milloween from Grey from Video Gamer on the wrong set here, and then Gamer bans the King Puff and Mordai in return, while TGX bans the Ratbo. All right, seems that. And he's not banning um, Bubio Gamers Mordar, which means Colossus. Finally happening. Pog Champ. That's a Poggers. Yeah, there's, there's, we see quite a few Colossuses or Colossi picked up this tournament so far on the uh, deck lists. Uh, why, why do you think and, that is? Well, Colossus is a great card. I don't know why people don't understand this. But uh, on a serious note, in Mordar, I feel that Colossus is really quite strong. Like, if you can get a Colossus Res or two, you're looking really, really good. Hmm. Oh, you also see, uh, it did get banned out, but Grey Wolf's brought a very old school deck. It's Armored Escorts, a card we have not seen at all since it got nerfed. And it was only definitely. a one mana change. Yeah, it's definitely gone way out of favor since the nerf, but it's still not a bad card. You can still yeah, make purchases with it. I'm not entirely sure that was a justified reaction from the player base to just drop that card. I thought I it was still going to be really was... strong after the nerf. I think it still yeah, is. It's... Yeah, I think the player base just went, it's, it's not OP anymore, I'm not going to play it. <laughs> Honestly, I, I was expecting it to still be a little bit OP, but I, people just dropped it. They yeah, dropped that thing like a rotten egg. So that is going to leave Grey Wolf with the Grey Wolf, you say? Oh, that Grey doesn't Wolf. seem right. I keep saying Grey Wolf. <laughs> I'm stuck in the wrong set. Gamer too excited with Stormbringer and Morda. I'm too excited for this Colossus, dude. I'm pumped. I know the feeling. Well, TGX Andy is left with the Ratbo and Milloween. It's a clear skies Milloween, your favorite. Ah, yes, my favorite. I can definitely see why uh, Andy decided to ban, for example, the uh, Ratbo here. Gamer is, uh, in my opinion, one of the better Ratbo players in this tournament and in general. I'll tell you and, one uh, thing Gamer is known for, King Puff, and he didn't bring it at all this tournament. Maybe he just felt He's that he as the best much. King Puff player. Maybe he just got bored of it. Made see Gamer been, rocking uh, the streamer avatar. And the Violet Stormbringer. I'm expecting Gamer to get the uh, the toxicity, uh, the BM out with the uh, streamer emotes any second. Are arenas uh, bugged, by the way? Or is it just me? I don't think I've seen a custom arena yet. I don't think so either. Hmm. Gamer rocking the That's fashionable unusual. purple Stormbringer. Yeah, we're, we're all a little experiment with the players in between the matches. Be a very interesting bug if that happens. Well, that's a real cleaver dropped right on top of the ball girl. No fear at all there of a missed target. And that screaming scrap's gonna pave the way into the Divine Roria from TGX Andy. That Reboomer have been has been able to walk the entire bottom lane, taking out multiple units. Oh, fine, it goes down there right before it can resurrect though. Gamer getting a good value from his uh, first crossbow guild. Yeah, 
And the reason we were on the crossbow guild just preventing a lot of lockdown on these bridges. Very annoying for Andy to deal with, but he is keeping up for now. Very even XP currently. Oh, nice fireball from Andy. See Andy taking some chip damage here from that crystal archer. Annoyingly, just barely out of range. Well, the max range archers can be very, very annoying to deal with. We see another Reboomer coming down here. It's going to get rid of those uh, fight dragons and force out the reaction of the Fire Imp. Reboomer not getting too much value there, being uh, burned out, literally. Yeah, so TGX I'd be able to keep in just by sniping in the bridge of these low-cost minions, thankfully. He XT, is hanging uh... in there. The XP is still really quite even. Rapple not pulling ahead as of yet. Oh, and the Cleaver missed targets. He's gonna sacrifice it to get this Wheel of Doom off, though. Just, just go all in on that wheel. Kills everything in his path. He does as well. love his Wheel of Doom. He really does. That one of the players was super that. Uh... When it first came out. Oh yeah. I think Gamer's one of the players that uses wheel the most in tournaments and in ranking. Yeah. I can see why he's very good at it. That defense though is just really good at taking out all of these melee units from Andy though, especially the the whelps. Hmm. He's gonna have a bit of trouble against this uh, flame imp though. I'm still surprised that Andy is not pulling further ahead with his XP. I mean, he's just barely ahead right now. Not. Considering the start of the game I had, I'm more surprised that it wasn't in the other direction. The Grey Wolf didn't get a ton of experience off the start. See more sacrifices of his own units to get this Wheel of Doom out on the Morgul. Not having a fun time yeah, dealing seeing, with the Swarm. Uh, definitely seeing a good amount of value wheels so far this game. Yep. There's the, there's the Reboomer, but again, it gets answered by the Fire Imp. Stormbringer ping, though. Does finish it off. Now Andy now we is see, pulling uh, ahead in XP. Andy's pulling ahead very rapidly. Gale just doesn't... Gamer does not have that uh, pressure. I am sorry. I don't know why I keep mistaking two of them. <laughs> it happens, it happens. The it happens to the best though. of us, you know? It definitely does. But yeah, Andy's just able to just keep sniping these bridges and Gamer just does not have the tempo to hold on to them anymore. Not when he keeps doing stuff like playing the Reboomer into a Fire Imp. This Cleaver is not long for this world though, I think. Yeah, it's gonna no, get it melted not. by the Flightless Dragons. There's the Reboomer again, but only after Andy's taken the bridges. Reboomer does get the value though. It does take out those, uh, those shrimps. Or, uh, plug the dragons. Holding that wheel patiently. Oh, very, a lot of patience there from Gamer, but it pays off. And in not hitting the brand new crossbow guild, though, might not have been the optimal play. I see Gamer is getting his Illocleaver in hand, and there it goes. Gamer having a pretty decent health lead and uh, not super far behind in XP, but definitely not loving this situation. Yeah, but with the amount of multi-unit ranged uh, minions he has, these scraps really aren't that much of a threat for him. Do you see the first meme storm of the game? Oh, another... oh no, if I only hit one of them! Slipe is hacking away from Andy. Yeah, Andy is again not hitting the brand new guild or hitting both. Slightly off by a centimeter, millimeter. I mean, you can't really spend too much time trying to aim it in the middle of a fight. Game Again, off. I see Gamer hovering his wheel, just waiting. Wants some juice. Wants to get that value. Yeah, he's not going to fight against the Divine Warrior though when that shield's up, though. And again, we see his, him leading the charge with a cleaver. Oh, tries to play the elusive game to block the crossbow to take it out instantly. That's a dead fire end. Facing a bit of a scary bottom push here. Well, the archers are taken out by the. Cleaver, very much still, aggressive cleavers. 
I'm, I am quite scared for Gamer right now, though. The XP is looking uh, yeah, very healthy for Andy. Andy's Another so 18. Much pressure. Gamer is way, way off his frenzy here, and there's no way he's going to get there before Andy. And if Andy just keeps the bridges for a little bit longer here, he will reach frenzy and probably overrun Gamer. I, I think he's hitting frenzy first, even if Gamer holds on to both bridges for the rest of the game now. Oh yeah, he, he will. You can see just 10 experience away from the mana frenzy. Look, Stamina looked like that's all she wrote for this match. And he just able to hold on to these bridges to the sacrifice some of his life. Only a gamer amount though in comparison. Uh, gamer wanting to get the valley out of the cleaver, but so hard to do against the Wrathful with this with this end yeah, of the yeah, I'm not sure I agree with this aggro cleaver that the meme played. It's so easy to interrupt. 5 XP off. And counting down 4 is... Uh, Counting down till the end at this point. Once Frenzy is reached for Andy, I don't think there's anything Gamer will be able to do. Oh, it does cycle out two cross wiggles very quickly though. That one's nearly full health still. But it comes to Fireball, and that's Finally. not gonna miss that time. TGX Andy hits a mana frenzy on top of that too. And Cleaver not even hitting the warrior, hitting a scrat. Does not feel good. Payful and here come the scrats. There's gonna be the so many horde. scrats you gotta deal with. Seemed like exactly. Gamer managed to get the early advantage, the early health advantage, early uh, XP advantage, but did not manage to keep Rattle off the frenzy, and now there is no escape. Grey Wolf, uh, Gamer, Gamer, throwing out these Wheel of Doomers. Scrats go flying everywhere, but it's not enough to stop the hordes coming through. They're Definitely just permanently the holding onto these bridges now, and he's so far can... away from like, getting to his own mana frenzy. Definitely. The wheel can get a lot of value just rushing through tons of units, but no matter how many units the wheel goes through, cannot kill enough of them. They just keep coming. Yeah, Fireball's just getting thrown face now. Gamer stops playing cards. It's looking pretty over. Throws his first Magma Storm of the match. Does get rid of a lot, but the Darker secures the victory for TGX Andy. I believe it was actually the second uh, Magma Storm of the match. I did see one earlier. Eight-minute game, though. But yeah, Frenzy Ratbow does take it in the end. Probably going to see a lot of those Ratbow matches throughout the tournament today, I think. Just Ratbow getting to that Frenzy over and over and over again. Yeah, okay, so we'll be looking to go into game two soon enough. So Gamer will be stuck on his uh, Mordar then, I believe. Which I'm very excited about. We have Harbinger, we have Colossus, we have Cleaver, we have Beam, Divine Warrior. A lot of high value cards. I'm looking to see tons of Colossus being rest here. Yeah, and they're wasting no time getting straight back into it. Pretty so having pink played, Mordor. Having played this matchup myself a lot with a uh, Colossus Mordor, Ratbo is not your ideal opponent. No. Strats. It, it, it sounds like, on paper, it's something Colossus should win easily, but once Rappo hits that perk too, that thing just get melted. My, maybe it back in the old days of the global attack range Rappo would have been a better matchup, but not these days. No, it's not the ideal matchup at all. Not, not when a darker Scrat Horde is going to deal 400 damage to your Colossus. Well, that does really hurt, and even if you res it, like, you're not getting any value. You need some value out of your Colossus or your big units. For it for the rest to even be worth a ton. Mm. Yeah, actually, interesting to see the pickup of a sunburn in this deck, though. I didn't quite catch that on the deck list before. Ah, oh, yes, a gamer is quite fond of the sunburn. I have to agree, it's a good support card for the mm. Colossus, for example, taking out Propeller Horde, taking out uh, yeah. other sort of uh, cheap air units or cheap units uh, that can be placed yeah. around the Colossus, and it enrages the Colossus. It's so. basically a mini beam of doom, and it also provides a rage. It's, speaking oh. of mini doom, he does a full beam of doom on that fire room. All the hate in the world for that card from Gamer. Maybe he's a bit traumatized from last match and does not want to see uh, that fire room get any value. Oh, but there's a nice uh, sunburn, though. There goes that tombstone. It's looking like it's going to be an easy Colossus resurrection here. TJX Andy is racing to try and kill before that tombstone activates, but it's not going to be fast enough. I have to say that the Divine Warrior does get value there. I don't really 
completely agree with Andy playing the Horde there. He does get, just get swiped by the Colossus. He, 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 also, he knew that the Colossus was gonna get resurrected if he, if he just left it there. He just wanted to try and race it and try and take it down as quickly as possible, but it didn't work out. Andy is quite far ahead in XP, almost double at this point, and that is not something you like. You want, with a Docker, that's gonna be very, very dangerous for the Colossus and all the big yeah. units. And this is where Gamer's comeback might start, because he's going to get a second Colossus on the field. One on both lanes. But there's that pesky fire from the top lane. It's going to shut down one of them. But a second one marches along just fine. Yeah, it's... Uh, even if the Colossus does not get the most value there, being taken out swiftly by the Fire Imp and Divine Warrior combo, it was a free Colossus. So you can't really oh, complain the about it. Dragon, so it's going to be a lot of DPS provided onto him. He's going to die before the Tombstone even activates. That's what Andy wants. Yes, it definitely is. Harbinger not going to die to uh, the Fireball there, though. Grey Wolf taking very dangerous amounts of hell from that Fire Imp. He's going to try and get Grey some Wolf. kind of value rise out of this Tombstone. Uh, this is the point where you really love being a Mordor. You have your big mana, big units out. You have your Tombstone ready to go. You're just waiting. Like, kill any of my units, I dare you. It's going to be close, but he gets the Harbinger Resurrection. Honestly, I don't think either of those were particularly good Resurrections in this matchup. The harm oh, just gets to be stuck on small targets all day Not long. Ideal. XP lead still looking very healthy for Andy. He doesn't, He's gonna oh. sunburn his own harbinger though. Might be a bit of overkill if you ask me, but that's an active tombstone. No matter what Andy kills here, if he kills it too fast. He's gonna try and take out the Colossus. Oh. I, I really... think he could have left that. I don't think it's he has to ever of those. Definitely. It's a bit sad that. Yes, you do, you do rest the Colossus, which is amazing, one of the best rests you can get in the game, oh. but the Colossus just did get almost no value, just Doc got to death immediately. Slight misplay from Gamer there, leaving that Divine Warrior open to be resurrected instead of the Colossus again. Divine is not a horrible rest, but that. obviously not their ideal one. Third perk for though. This Cleaver will get nothing done, ever. Yeah, that elusive Cleaver as well. The minions don't even care about it. Oh, it's a nice sunburn, though, Juicy. But he resurrects an illusory cleaver. It just stayed alive too long. The nightmare. I'm sure Andy did that on purpose as well. There is no way Gamer survives here. There no, he is I, I, I think behind. this is just one too many bad resurrections. Andy controlling the resurrections very well this game. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that Andy well, 25 was very... 25 more going to do it. And it was very, very conscious, I'm quite sure, that he just, he just on purpose not killed that illusionary cleaver. Just waiting. He killed it just in time to be rest by the tombstone and not anything else. Tombstone, yeah, tombstone firing exploring. on the back line. This is the game of illusory cleaver. And he's just masterfully playing around this colossus. One more fireball to face is going to do it, and he should have that in hand right about now. Yeah, this is just a bit sad to see. You have your rest Mordor deck, you you do try to get the best reses, but the Harbinger gets no value, hitting scrat after scrat after scrat. Colossus not getting much value, being just killed by a combo of either mm. Divine and Fire Imp or Daka or everything else. Just yeah. not getting close to good enough value. And he knew, and he went into that match knowing exactly what he had to do to take down that, that Mordor. I mean, video gamer did get some Colossus Resurrections in there, but they just never had the impact required. And then when he really needed those Resurrections the most, and he was able to shut that down. Yeah, he did not at all get the value he needed and or wanted that game. And as the Colossus fanboy, I have to say that is quite saddening. I was really hoping for Colossus to show, show his glory here. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Alright, so we've still got some games to go through. We're going to be having our Observer Spectre in a couple of games, maybe a bit of Casting Sprinkle in there. We'll see you guys soon. Alright, welcome back everyone. The conclusion of round 3 is here. Cut through the results. TGX Andy, 2-0's Video Gamer as we saw on the stream. Darian, 2-1's JF. Grey Wolf, 2-0's Lazur. Manifesto, 2-0's Soul Spirit. Cat 2 0's thinking with portals. Fandaman 2 0's Kishin. Katsui takes a win over Flo Florian. 
Kaiser Bomber 2-0's Wiso die. Keldor off 2-0, 2 1's Shin. Touch Me I'm Fluffy 2-1's Von Slacken. Rhinoceros 2-0's Villain Razor. Divine 2-0's In Joker. The Dover Nation 2-0's Archster. Brainless and Courage 2-1's Tomato Mato. Rekabe get takes a win over Decimus. Pura. I read this correctly? We may have a bit of a. Pura 2-0's Toxic. J Boy 2-0's Chevron. And Tim vs. Debt Slave appears to be a draw because both players have dropped out of the tournament. And Digioso 2-0's Fury Equim. I, I could have sworn I heard that Dova Nation won another 2-0. That sounds almost uh, impressive. I haven't seen Dova playing too many uh, KPCs lately. Or uh, maybe I just haven't noticed them. No offense. Uh, but uh, good for Dova winning some, uh, some matches. Yep, indeed. So we'll be going on to round four, which is going to be JF versus Katsui. JF is a uh, rather infamous name around the high-level community. Definitely a so, very solid, very high-skilled player. Absolute menace on the leaderboard. I only recently started getting into the competitive scene on a regular basis. I know we played some tournaments here and there, but nothing consistent. But we've been seeing him quite a few times lately. Yeah, I've been getting to bring more into these, it. Uh, fairly unorthodox decks, and you're not really quite sure how they're supposed to win. Yeah, he has uh, shown some ingenuity, creativity in his deck building, and uh, has uh, definitely executed them well as well. Yeah, as we can see, he has a uh, crossbow guild king puff, which is... I mean, I mean why not? Interesting. <laughs> I think I have a couple of reasons why not. Well, I suppose. It does help the scrap tank, though, to, I suppose, tank for the, the guild and have a succubus behind, uh, mm. flame imp behind. Yeah. The band also, a uh, healing puff there in the KP. Hmm, it's a very unorthodox King Puff deck. Definitely. With the band start coming in. JF bans Katsui's King Puff, and I'd like to point out that is a ravenous moon sexy with an empowered soul stealer and lone wolf. That 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 is going to be banned. No questions asked. I don't think it is. I think JF's it, probably it... played against so many of those kinds of decks that just. Trying super hard to end the game early that he can probably just deal with it just fine. I suppose. So, from shout out from to my the... in my case it's more of a principal ban. Shout like, out to I don't want to see probably this. the most glorious stream overlay I've ever seen, by the way. With Katsui's oh. avatar. That's a sexy one, I have to agree. <laughs> Katsui bans Rappo and Stormbringer off of JF. So... Katsui not a player that I've really seen seen too much maybe that's just me i've uh, heard the name before mm. not too familiar yeah. with the player though i've definitely heard the name as well and i mean he does have he does have a decent idea of what he's doing with the deck building nothing really seems too out of place here the setsu ban does come through though yeah he does go with the setsu uh -huh. then like, i guess that he just feels the deck might be too volatile and yeah i can I mean, understand it's definitely uh it's definitely a deck where it's like, if you make one mistake, you're dead. Like, yeah. you are just dead. Yeah, it's, it's one and of those games you can punish them really hardly, just as just really hard, just as much as they can towards you. So that is going so... to leave JF with his King Puff and Volko up against Katsui's Milloween and Volko. And that Milloween has bats, bats, bats in it, which is a car we I mean, really have not seen much of since its nerf. No, Bats, Bats, Bats is uh, one of those cards that went from being stupendous to just not used, really. Eh, it can, it can it, be it, used. It does though. see some use in Azali decks, from what I know. Yes, it does strong. see some Azali usage, but I don't think I've really seen uh, a few Ratbull decks as well, I have uh, have noticed. But not much at all. Hmm. This Mm, let's see. What did uh, JF ban again? Yeah, he did, did ban the King Puff. I was about to say, he must have banned this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what JF can, can bring if he opens with his uh, King Puff, or if he opens with his... Uh... Oh, 
I, I feel yeah. like it's better to open with the King Puff here, because the Volko deck just seems far more consistent. Volko deck seems just like a... Yeah, just... You have some removal, you have your Shouse, you have your Archer, Fire Rimp, Divine... And that one spin in there. as well for that perk free late game. Also seen a lot of... Uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of... Uh... Yeah, I've actually seen JF do this... Uh... On ranked, where he one spittens his screaming scrat into units to get it transformed. Huh. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought of that. And uh, th I don't know if the uh, the bug with the taunt still being on the unit is fixed or not, or if it's just a visual thing now. But also an I'm interesting. Not entirely point. sure myself, but we'll guess we'll be finding out because that's what we've got. Starting a sub. But yeah, wanting the, the best arena and the, the best Volko skin. One of the only Volko skins, <laughs> unfortunately. Beta Try Dwarf is hiring an animator! We will get good Volko skins one day. We'll get a good Volko skin as soon as we get an animator who can animate the new Volko skin. Because uh, the Volko mod does look really good, but just not rigged Ooh. up properly right now. Early XP advantage for uh, Katsui here. Oh, this is a surprising amount of bats coming out early game. I didn't expect that much. You do see the play there. The Screaming Scrat, one spitten. Yeah, but Katsui's able to deal with it pretty effectively. And there's the clear skies as well. That's a really nice start for Katsui. Definitely. The XP lead at double right now. And uh, just having that clear skies is going to be very valuable. Yeah. Into uh, second, third perk. Bats ain't dead. We'll see how much oh, value the, the bats. The fire protection's barely out of range. Oh, it's finally going on. But the black hole from Katsui, this, this arcane column will just not die. It does seem like Katsui really wants to keep his golems alive, keep buffing them, keep clear skying them. Yeah, it's gonna be a divine warrior, and it should finally be the end. Nope, there's the clear skies. Right to, right in time to get rid of the shield from Xiao Long as well and dagger fall it. This must yeah, be frustrating pricing. to go against. A 7 stacked Arcan Golem this early in the game. It finally goes down to the werewolf. But there's still a Golem top lane, and it's gonna take out the Morgul and maybe more. Not, not loving the XP lead that Katsui is having here. If it gets to that third perk, that is gonna be very scary. Especially yeah, with, it was uh, entirely just off that first Arcane Golem too. Very well played, uh, Missiles there. Yeah, these bridges fire. gonna sit half and half for now, but the important one is that bottom bridge against the Volko. Yeah, I don't think JF has gotten almost any bolts off with that bottom bridge. He throws out a Daggerfall on nothing just to get some more mats out. But against the Volko, that is definitely uh. worth. They're gonna get a lot of damage in if they stop never stepping off the face towards an enemy minion. Uh, Volko's worst nightmare. Unlimited bats. Oh, they're always gonna jump on this stent now, but they're still targeting face. None of them actually target it. RNG in is in JF's favor right now, barely. Ketsu yeah, having but... a well, Ketsu having a bit of an HP deficit here, not too much though. XP being mm. more tied up. Yeah, as soon as JF caught on to the strategy Katsu was using and adapted fairly well, still a lot of bats to deal with. Oh, it's a nice black hole as well to keep them alive a little bit longer. And the double stacked up Arcane that's actually pretty dangerous against JF because he knows that Fire Imp is in the cycle somewhere. You have to try and protect himself from that. All the while, the Mana Puff, well, I guess it does die to Bridge Burn there, but the Mana Puff was sitting pretty for a while. Oh, this Fire Imp's going to do so much when it gets off. There's the clear oh. skies there. They, actually, they get separated a bit by the Morgul. That a nine stack. Morgul nine actually. Stack golem. Morgul really game. working against JF though. He just pushes the arcane goal even closer to the face. Oh, 10 stacks now. Oh, That's the Neverman takes out the fire room! I can't believe that Katsuya's uh, gotten this high stack golems before perk 3. Katsuya is really <laughs> impressing us with how well he's playing this deck. The Volko's just not JF getting was... any bolts off. <laughs> I don't think JF was quite prepared for what he was going to be facing. I do not think so either. 
There's that just... clear skies out. It's going to keep the arcane golem alive and the daggerfall as well to back it up. And there's so many bats coming out. It's not a favorable match for the Volko here. The bats are super annoying, and the clear skies just can keep those bolts not mean too much. And these these golems, the stacks they're getting, like a ten, 10 stack. Ten golem, four and a half minutes in, getting pushed close to the face by Morgul. Look at a few cheeky face damage. hits in there as well, but Katsuri's got a bit of trouble at home here. Oh, it's a good fireball from JF, takes out all of the bats in one fell swoop. That is very good, but the XP advantage is heavily in Katsuri's favor, almost 40 up here. Well, yeah. Mm, perk 3 for JF though is going to be a huge turning point, I think. The rage is going to help so help. much of pulling out these arcane golems. Still though, if Katsuri is able to keep these bridges and get the frenzy, it's not super far away. I mean, 40 XP is a while, but still. And our King Gold finally getting brought down here, but another one marches along the top lane. You also see that Katsuri just missiling face, just going very aggro. Yeah, but JF will be able to start tanking that up now. There's the Clear Skies. Good is actually going to help JF out quite a bit here. So one disadvantage for running Clear Skies Millowing, so your opponent isn't going to die anytime soon either. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting uh, interesting point. The Clear Skies being thrown out. Yeah, it does heal your golems. It does buff them. But it does keep JF alive for longer. Which seems kind of counterproductive when you're throwing missiles at his face and you just heal him up about a minute later. But it's, uh, kind of maybe it's is what this deck of... is about. Might be advanced BM. Might be. Yeah, and that wolf just tearing out Arcane Golem apart. Actually, Katsuri's taking a lot of damage here! Yeah, that wolf got a lot of work done with the Fire Rim support. But yeah, I think Katsuri very close to Frenzy. JF's able to take out these golems so fast now that there's nearly nothing to defend for Katsuri. Chris Guys is removing the rage, but the Volko nice. bridge mark is up. This is starting to get very close to lethal range. Katsui needs to take this bridge back now! And he, he needs to have his clear skies in hand. He needs to get Frenzy. If he, yeah, if it's he, not looking like it. It's not like that's going to be lethal damage coming on oh, in there. No, oh. the clear skies just barely keeping alive for just a second longer. JF not with an enough. excellent comeback at perk 3. That was definitely a very good Volko comeback there. Showing that uh, Volko really... Really, uh, really knows that face is the place. Those bolts hitting repeatedly. Yeah, just keeping nice and composed when it came to that perk free. The clear sky is ironically sustaining him from the middle lane. And then I think... when he was able to just tear through the arcane golems, there was nothing to stop that face pressure coming in. I think that was uh, Katsui's game to lose. And I think he lost that uh, by playing all those clear skies. Like he had missiles on face repeatedly. If he yeah. just had not played Clear Skies, he could have probably DPSed him down. Maybe, or maybe he was not just sure. anticipating that. He could have tanked up those missiles fairly easily. Missiles are not a consistent source of face damage. But we're going straight in to game two, a Volko mirror match. In that case, I would personally favor uh, JF, but we'll see how it goes. Mm. What, what's in this uh, Volko deck from Katsuyu, actually? Stunlance is the one. That's an interesting Volko pickup. Magma turret. Actually gonna work out fairly well for Katsui here. It takes the bridges nice and fast. Getting a and bit of a reliable early experience. I don't think Lancers strap. will be the best unit this game though. We'll see. Ooh! The Magma Cannon actually just one shots the Scream Scrap once it's softened up by the Marines. The Werewolf does not activate. That is very unfortunate. Very, very fortunate for Katsui, mind you. Because otherwise it's the only winning move against that Scrap is to just not damage it. Also have the uh, first perk on the same bridge, XP in Katsui's favor a bit, HP even. Hmm. Yeah, but Jeff's pretty good at keeping these bridges back, but he seems to be losing this early game bridge pressure. Yeah, JF is getting some extra face damage in there, taking some extra HP off, and with Volko, every single uh, hit point taken off can be very valuable, since you do have that burn. Just loving how that Magma Turret just one-shots the units coming over. It's like, ah, I see you over my side of the field, and oh, now you're yeah, dead. It's a very effective defense against some of JF's cards. 
he's really just not playing that Screaming Scrat combo anymore. Katsuri hasn't really given him much to chew on. Has not. Yeah, he would have had a decent opportunity to get it off there. He's not even going to play the ones betting with it. Looking to be a quite, uh, quite an even game so far. XP is in Katsuri's favor, uh, but HP is in JF's favor. And we'll all be about this bottom bridge, I think. Just keeping the bottom bridge, getting the bolts on face. Yeah, what you always like to see when you're passing is when the mark ends up on both bridges. Makes things it'll nice a, and interesting. Yeah, it'll be a tug of war. Who can keep the bottom bridge? Who can keep the bolts coming and DPS the other down first? Looks like that's going to be Katsui for now. It keeps on with that bridge for quite a while, getting about a 20 experience advantage. Did not kill the Fire Imp with the bridge burn, but Volko finishes off. Yeah, Volko gets it in just before the attack starts from, Kats from uh, JF's Fire Imp, but Werewolf successfully triggers now, but that Mavicam's doing a lot of damage to it. The Scrap have to tank it up, but who doesn't get anything done? Yeah, oh, but a nice like, fire yeah. there to get rid of the stun lances. I feel like JF is uh, looking to be more and more in control here. He's keeping the bottom bridge more. He's utilizing his mana and units when he has the bottom bridge to keep those bolts coming. Yeah, he has the bottom bridge less, but he really makes it count when he does. Just getting like... four or five units out when you have the bottom bridge, it, it yeah. really it really does count. It feels like the difference in this match is that Katsuri is blowing all of his mana to hold onto this bottom bridge, and then doesn't have anything for the fire bolts. So yeah, this frog is a screaming scrap on it, and then fires out four or five minions, and that's a lot more damage. The magma turret not getting value placed on bridge there. Stunlands are proving uh, kind of annoying there for the werewolf. Yeah, it's pretty effective, but the fireball in there wipes out the whole push. Really favoring JF here uh, as we move forward into the game. XP is looking more and more even, but JF is keeping that bottom bridge when he is playing units. Enraging Shao as well. Nah, well, Mabba Cannon doesn't care too much about it. Fair enough. The Katsui, he's just 10 fireballs away from death now. It's kind of scary. Plus, JF does have the fireball. Only needs some bolts. And Ketsui knows that, plays the Divine down on bottom bridge, just not want to let JF have that at all costs. It's just like he's throwing the Diaphol to his angle towards face instead of trying to get rid of this Fire Imp as soon as possible. Seeing the mirror here, the Divine, the Divine, the Fire Imp, the Fire Imp. JF is playing so patiently with these Firebolts. He could just spam it all out at once, but he doesn't really want to. Trying to conserve mana to get that bottom bridge and get the units out. There's a few more bolts and a fireball. We'll close it out. Shao even on face now. Third perk for both players, but this is probably going to be the end. I mean... Yeah. JF just... This is the epitome of the slow death from JF. He could have ended this game about a minute ago, I think. Just get the unit on the bottom bridge. You play a unit, play another unit, bolts, fireballs. There we go. Very composed the ending there for JF, but he does take out Katsui 2-0 in the end after a remarkable comeback in game one. Volko might not be that strong on ladder, not a popular master in high ranks on ladder right now, or have, have, hasn't been for a while, but in tournaments, very strong still if you know how to play him. Absolutely. All right then, so we'll be coming to some highlights and the game footage of matches currently ongoing while we wait for the end of round four. We will see you soon. Indeed. Welcome back everyone to the fifth round of the Swiss group stage and man, we are flying through it today. That feels good for everyone involved, I imagine. So let's do a quick recap of round four. We got Cat 2 owing TGX Andy. Grey Wolf 2-0's Memphisto, Darian 2-1's Fanderman, and JF, as we saw, 2-0's Katsui in a surprisingly close set. Kelgaroth 2-1's Hazard Bomber, Brainless and Courage 2-0's Touch Me, I'm Fluffy, 
And Video Gamer 77, two ones thinking with portals. Pura, two o soul spirit. Or Rhinoceros, two o's divine. Laser, two o's the Dover nation. And Shin, two o's J boy 10. Floforian, two o's von Slacken. Kishin, two o's tomato mato. Regabe takes a win against Why So Die. And Villain Razor takes a win against Sad Hippo. Archda, two o's in Joker. Toxic takes a win against Digioso. Decimus takes a win against Tim, and Chavron takes a win against Fury Equem, while Death Slave gets a bye. And going on to round five, we will be watching Memphisto versus Darian, and this is a matchup for the ages, Gnome. Oh yeah, this, uh, we have two of the titans here, Memphisto being one of the uh, oldest players in the game. Been playing for a long, long time, even before I started, I believe, and I started a good while ago. I believe he started that. around the time I was playing, and I've been playing this game for a long time. These are definitely the old guards of the tournament scene. He won multiple uh, KPIs, and uh, mm -hmm. just an extremely solid player. Yeah, even though I don't think the... he plays as actively currently as he has in the past. Maybe I'm wrong though, but yeah, still extremely yeah. strong. Memphisto, of course, is the two-time KPI winner, and Darian has quite a lot of KPC victories under his belt as well back in the Red Golem days, so he is a force to be reckoned with. Darian also, he got top four in the Snowsgiving tournament uh, not like, oh, yeah, a month and a half ago. Hmm. I, so Darian's still keeping up. Yeah, Darian is definitely... Uh, I lost to Darian, actually, in the Snowsgiving uh, top eight. Feels mm. bad, man. But yeah, Darian <laughs> is a very, very good player as well. Both of these very, very skilled, very, very... I mean, they have thousands of hours, both of them, I think. Mm. So uh, they will not right. make many mistakes. So the bands come in. Darian bans King Puff, Memphisto bans Setsu and Volko, and then Darian bans the Ratbo. All right, so uh, the decks, the decks. I mean, Darian... I think the biggest thing to note is that Darian's Red Gold and Ratbo is still up for grabs. Mephisto did is, uh, not ban it out. I definitely agree with Mephisto banning the Volko though, because Darian's Volko is a menace, and uh, yeah. Deca did not want to face overall. Absolutely. Setsu as well, especially this Setsu with Lone Wolf, Prop Horde, Cleaver. Looks fairly aggressive. Hmm. Interesting that Mephisto had a Sniper Squad Rapo lined up, but that did get banned out. Not a combo you see that often. Not Stun Lancers either. Yeah, I mean, if you see lineup. Sniper Squad, you, you have to see Banning them with it because the card's very strong, but only if it has that shield buff. Otherwise, oh, it's yeah. just so prone to removal. Yeah, Banner Man really makes that uh, that card shine. Yeah, it's basically eight mana, and it's they it's it's eight mana. And it's a better but grounded Harbinger, is how I'd put it. That's much less susceptible to being removed. Here we go into game one, though. They're wasting no time at all. Well, they're very quick on the trigger. Just want to get oh, in, Arch. get out, get some <laughs> easy Arch wins. Archmage Milloween up against Darian with that classic of a early access arena. Underrated arena, I feel. It's coin. She also mentioned that uh, Darian is one of the three people undefeated so far in this tournament. Oh. I believe. 12 nice. points. Ooh. Nice screening scrap punch on the blood ends. That's fairly unconventional. And spectating bug. Never mind. Oh dear. Well, I'll carry this in the meantime, I suppose. And Leap Swarm are getting some free hits on Darian's face. Look like it's going to do about 200 damage. I don't suppose he minds too much. Milloween isn't exactly what you'd know as an aggressive deck. But it's an aggressive deck, but an instant reaction of the Divine Warrior from Memphisto. Nicely there we done. Go. All Getting right, to the game here. Back. First thing I see is Blood Imps. And I see the Blood Imps getting fireballed. These two are punishing each other pretty well. Especially after the fireball buff. That hurts even more. It's a heal puff of Mephisto's deck, probably to counteract the Blood Imps. Now, Blood Imps is an interesting card because it's a card some people will swear their lives by, but people still don't really pick it up that much. It's a very risky card, and you need to know what you You really do. Mm. If not, you will be annihilated. And also, I your suppose. opponent can uh, very easily know how to answer it, too. Oh, yeah. Especially, I mean, in my case, I play a lot of Colossus, so Blood Imps don't fare well against me, but uh, <laughs> even general removal. The classic. Especially with that damage buff as well they got recently. Yeah, thanks for that buff, by the way. I appreciated it. 
Eh, well, if not killing Armony Escorts was a bit stupid, so. Good, good. I imagine Mephisto is using Blood Imps to get more cycle, though, and to get just more Golems out. Go yeah, that that does seem hurt. to be the MO, just get some nice cycle early game to contest these bridges better. And it has been working out, as we can see. That heal oh, puff, he does get value. Puff alive, but no, not barely. I mean, he's still healed for more than enough to Ooh, uh, justify the cost. Can't get up with the Elite Swarm to keep that uh, Golem alive. Durian is having a 400 plus HP lead here, though Mephisto has a small XP lead. Yeah, I think Mephisto just been just in a... Uh... Letting these uh, minions hit his face and trading off the HP just to get that bridge control. Oh, the Shockrock misses the Xiao, but the Arcane Missiles will come in and deal with it. But there's no real healing available for that thing. Tyrion does get a decent 4 mana rest here with the Whirly Scrat. Tyrion does not give Mephisto any opportunity to heal from the healing puppet. We see Mephisto taking a trick out of JF's book there. Or Andy's book, as I'm told by chat. Apparently, it's... Uh... It's a yeah, combo that I've just seen. Is it now? Yeah, well, apparently he's I, the one that who, came up with it. Whoever started it first, it it works. It's That's a very important. interesting strat. Very ingen very ingenuitive. Now this is fairly scary from Dirion though, a cleaver and a succubus on the top lane. But the Vine though, he's, he's sharp. He shock rocks that tombstone. No value for you yet, Dirion. That divine I warrior really got. The one where he got immense value there, top lane. Again, yeah. with the wolf. Succubus and the Whirly Strat, it's okay. It's not the best, but better than nothing. Durin has now lost his HP lead and is down. Mm. That heal puff really generating HP from Mephisto as well. Mephisto getting close to third perk. Mm. Also, that confirms the taunt is not visual, because that screen the scout was running at the werewolf, so... Gotta and, um, fix your buds. question from earlier. Just gotta send it to FDM. Yep, send it FDM's way. Taunt is not considered a buff, it's considered an ability, so it should not be active under a werewolf. That shock rock that does not hit in time for the succubus not to rest. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. It might be if you get this complete resurrected. No, nope, it's gonna die in time. These blood imps have gotten decent value so far this game, I believe. The heal puff really uh, cancelling out their. Uh... Yeah, he's, he's negative trade. He gets those heals in past the early game, and uh, now he gets perk free, nice and early with two arcane golems on the field. A little yeah, bit terrifying. Really... Mephisto was already uh, winning the game uh, on health, and is winning on XP. But now with third perk, I think he's just gonna run away with it unless Tyrion can make a big counter push or make something happen. Even tanking that uh, that cleaver hit with the screaming scratch to avoid the 300 face down. Yeah, Darian taking a lot of damage there from the arcane golem, is dropping quite low. Boomstones are prepped up though. I'm, I'm, like I would imagine Mephisto. Mephisto is probably quite comfortable here. He has heal. He has healing, and uh, yeah. Darian is getting lower and lower on HP. And he gets two very strong reses in the drone walker and the succubus, especially it's in this matchup. Enough. It's still not enough to beat that other king on the top lane, though. Does get a healing pop with the Illoc Cleaver. It is something. XP lead, though. Still pretty good from Mephisto. And he has almost double the health. Oh, the Arcane Golem targets onto the Succubus, though. Ooh. That's not good for news for Darien at all. And that Drone Walker just does nothing. Just dies and rests again. Well, he's gonna come back with Frenzy, deal quite a lot of deeps, but Mephisto is just brute forcing his way through all of Darien's defenses. Looking like an open and shot case for this game. Yeah, a 10 stack golem on face. That's 100 damage for shot, yeah. And another 8 stack and a 5 stack behind that again. And the heal puff just letting... Letting him just be there. Darien can get as many resurrections as he wants, but it's not gonna stop the steamrollers from the arcane golems. And then just even oh, worse. Oh, the, the shock off though, the crippling blow. No resurrection for you, sir. Fancy Succubus is incredibly sexy, but not against the Wine Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> These golems, the value they give, and then another heal puff. Illo does not take it out. Oh, the heal puff actually tanks up for the Arcane Golem, gonna make it live! I mean, did the face. same thing last time as well. 
very slightly missed time. Oh, but the screaming scrap from Memphisto! Memphisto just taking no prisoners. And Frenzy for Memphisto as well, by the way. If if he didn't what if he wasn't already winning. Yep, now and that's to steal the deal. Memphisto just really punishing Darian for every play he made in that. Yeah, Memphisto just doing just playing extremely well and solidly, tanking the cleaver hits with either a heal puff or a screaming scrat or some other or some other really counter there. Yeah, he, he wasn't afraid it. to just let an elite swarm attack the hit. Oh, no, and oh. getting a lot of just into oh, the game. Okay, we're going straight back into it, yeah. wasting Hold no time people. at all. That's gonna be the fastest want... deck switch I've ever seen. I just want like ten seconds to talk about the last game, Memphisto. Give me, give me give a stream row moment, please. Think about the think about the observer. Oof. That start though, those blood yeah, imps but... straight on the face. This time it's Darian's turn to really want to be taking this damage from the blood imps. Blood imps against blood imps. I... I mean, I do feel uh, Deering is feeling kind of uh, masochistic here. Is one who wants to hurt himself. Get that red golem. Power through pain, as they say. Indeed. Frenzied, not frenzied, but uh, surged archers. That's pretty good against the golem, though. Absolutely. He's gonna. Deering have any ways to really get through those? It doesn't look like it. All he's got is a fireball, which is not the best. And in a Blood Imp fight, the one with the healing puff will mostly win that. Well, they both have healing puffs, so... Trading come down who can remove their healing puff better. I think it does still go to Deering, though, as we saw last game. He has some uh, handy ways of getting rid of the heal puff. Again, seeing that Wolf... Seeing a slight XP advantage for Mephisto, not what you want as a rat bow. Also, decent health lead for Mephisto here. Hmm. I mean, Fisto, he's doing pretty well at making sure he can't punish these blood imps too much. You generally don't want to let him get that blood imp before about two, three minutes in. It's also so tempting to just fireball those five blood imps, but if you do that, you are paying yeah. four mana for it. And against the and... red golem deck, letting them get the red golem on the field that early in the game, and you don't have the mana to really effectively counter it. It's not always going to be the best. So idea. treacherous. So treacherous with healing puffs on both sides as well. Oh. You do go for that face damage, you can- Oh, he's 1500! He's just 1 HP above being able to use the red golem! Hate being to see it blue happen. Balled, blue balled heavily by the game right now. Just once, one tick, like one blood imp hit, anything. Just tick me once. Yeah, he's gonna happens. let that arcane golem be the one to do it. And there's that red golem instantly! Now, the question is, how much of a problem is this for Memphisto? Mephisto is full HP almost again. I mean, Deering is not. I mean, obviously, even that's if the Red Dawn. I'm just now really gonna, not now liking. Comes the true test. How well can Memphisto deal with this uh, Red Dawn? The Archer does with just divine. pretty well. Pretty good. I have to be worried here for Deering, though. He does have a huge HP deficit. He is behind in XP as a Rat Bow, not something you do like. You can't just get another red golem out, but that red golem on did. that werewolf, though. Pulls that red golem back. It just feels like the red golem is just not getting much done so far. Just not it's, getting the value. Yeah, it's just too slow. And just there's all the time in the world to come up with a counter push to it. Yeah, and, and he has divine. He has archers. It's hard to get through. And the screaming scram, especially when it transforms into the werewolf and keeps that taunt ability. Definitely. I would hope that Deering is looking to heal some here, sooner rather than later. Well, it's a matter if he gets the space for it. Oh, the attack, it's not enough! One tick. He has to commit another fireball for it, and that feels bad. Getting the some... mana from Mana Puff, though. Yeah, that's not pretty good. I'd like to see the heal puff drop alive. behind that red golem now. Or maybe if even get... Up to get his... Nope, he's gonna get his next red golem out now, while well, this is still behind on the cycle. Got two or three mana from that mana puff. Very good. Very nice. Still though, HP looking a bit dire here for Deering. He should get a heal puff down anytime now just to try to recover some HP. And Mephisto getting close to third perk. Ooh, he infused a stint there. Interesting. Even though the red got. Oh, it does drop the heal puff finally, thankfully. 
Yeah, he's holding on to that screaming scrap. He wants to keep it alive, but oh, the the, the healing puff finally goes down, but the Illusion Cleaver takes it out with its AOE, and now Dira is in a very precarious position. Yeah, Mephisto again, just showing showing how good he is at the game and how uh, how he knows how to deal with the Red Golem as well, and just everything that Dira can throw at him. He has that third perk now as well, and this is going to heal even more. Dira has no way to really get close to Mephisto's face. I feel. Yeah, it just feels like the Red Golem's too slow. It doesn't get and, enough done. Especially not when third perk is hit for a Milloween. And again, the, the Divine, the Archers, all this... Look how much damage control. Look how much damage it deals just one shot to the Red Golem. That's about half its health gone from the Arcane Golem alone. A single uh, m missile will now finish Dyrian off, I believe. If it all goes into the face. correct, yes. Here it comes. Oh, tanks, tanks it. Tanks the marines. But Mephisto is full health, so what is Dyrian supposed to do here? He, he needs How to get does Dyrian come back into this game? That's a good question. He needs to He's like... He's gonna get the GG. I think he knows it's over. Yeah. He's gonna let it end. Shock rock finish. Don't Mephisto do that too often either. Mephisto takes the set 2-0 in a convincing victory. Yeah, Mephisto... Also a really good Milloween player. I've, uh, the last... Three games of playing against Mephisto, I think we're all as him playing Milloween. And they were not easy matches to play. <laughs> He's been putting the hours into learning that master, it seems. I mean, I think he knows every master at this point. But at least... Yeah, master of all. At least well enough. Very good right. uh, good matchup, though. I mean, very solid play from both players. But Mephisto really showing uh, the power of that Milloween deck. I wasn't necessarily convinced about the Blood Imps uh, to begin with here, but... They, they worked out quite well, that healing puff uh, also getting a lot of value. Indeed. All right, then we'll be cutting to some passive spectator footage and some highlights while we wait for the conclusion of round five. See you guys soon. All right, welcome back, guys, to round six of the Swiss stage. As always, let's go through a nice quick recap of the results. Cat 2 0s Grey Wolf, Memphisto 2 0s Darian, JF 2 0s TGX Andy, Video Gamer 2 0s Lazur, Kelgaroth 2 0s Brainless and Courage, Rhinoceros 2 0s Pura, Fanderman 2 0s Katsumi, Shin 2 0s Kishin, and Thinking with Portals 2 1s Flo Florian, Hazard Bomber 2 1s Regabe, The Dover Nation 2 0s Sword Spirit, Villain Razor takes a win against Touch Me I'm Fluffy. Divine 2 1 Chevron, and Why So Die takes a win against Archster. Decimus takes a win against Von Slack and Roller Tomato. Mate takes a win against Toxic. Jade Boy 10 2 1 Sad Hippo. Injoker and Depth Slave have both retired from the tournament. And Digioso 2 0's Tim 2 2. Which means our match for this round is going to be the Dover Nation versus Shin, the one and only. Indeed, the one and only BDSM master of minion masters. <laughs> what kind of introduction is that to a player? Okay, fine. That might have been a bit unfair, but close enough. It's it's the Dover Nation. And yeah, yeah, I guess it is close enough, huh? I mean, he is he is uh he's known for being some interesting decks. Like his Apep here, for example. Like his Apep, for example. Which I'm pretty sure he tried to include the worst cards he could possibly think of into it, and sort of got half of them wrong anyways. Uh, yes, it, it would seem so. Also, uh, I would quickly like to, uh, to mention that uh, Cat is undefeated so far in the tournament. Not surprising, but... Not surprising. But yeah, Dover Nation. Haven't... Played in too many tournaments the, this last the last few months, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Has been yeah, having correct. some 2-0s here, though. Hmm. You know, we have Shin. I think he was in the last KPC. My memory seems to remember that name. I He's don't some... really remember the name, personally. He's bringing some very aggressive decks in. These are decks you would see common plays about a month or two ago. Do you have the Shrine, Clear Skies, Milloween? Do have the very aggressive uh, 
Dragon Ball, Cleaver, Dragon Ball into Twins, the Lone Wolf, the Empowered uh, Soul Stealer, Empowered Soul Stealer just just smork all the way and like really uh, trying to kill you with the first perk. Uh, bans decent. In. Shin no, bans Milloween from Dover. Dover bans Ravager and Apep. Definitely understand that Ravager ban. That's uh, I don't want to yeah, mess just, with that just, deck. There's no reason to face that. And we'll Interesting see what that he bans the Milloween bans. though from Dover. I mean, the thing is with Dover decks is which one do you ban? Uh, yeah, is... it, it's a mind game, isn't it? Dover just makes it so hard on on their on his opponents. It's like it, just ban the deck. I dare you. Can't ban the deck if the old deck's not worth banning. Yeah, I mean the Milliman was banned, and it has uh, Wheel, Guardian, Succubus, uh, Healing Fireball, even Bridge Buddies. Well, not all of those are weird cards having Milliman, but definitely a unique setup there. <laughs> Should ban the Apep. <laughs> I mean, definitely. It's a dangerous deck here with uh, Gax. It's a Lance, dangerous deck. We could have less than one minute games on stream. We don't we can't, we can't have, have that. that. Shout out to Shin looking puff. Masters here. Hypnotize. Oh, Shout out to Shin. Scary. What a guy. Oh. Just respecting the APEP. I mean, personally, I probably would have banned the APEP anyway because it's APEP and just get it out of here. No matter if it's Dover playing Dover decks, uh, just be on the safe side. I think he's more respecting the stream than he is respecting the deck. Because at maybe least these matches doesn't... will last a bit longer now. Yeah, maybe he just doesn't want to like see Dover hurt himself that badly. <laughs> maybe he doesn't want to see the uh, the music and the highlights anymore as well. Definitely, he doesn't want that highlight where uh, he wins the game in like 38 seconds. And then has to so, watch it again and again. At least Dover with Morda and Ravager up against the King Puff and Milloween. Red Golem so Ravager is again. one way to do it. Without Blood Imps, though. Ooh, it's the Pope King Puff! Ah, like the, the, the cute one. One with the cat. The, the, the first and probably Mr. only time there'll ever be a cat in Minion Masters. Indeed. Uh, the Christmas Mortar is a bit late, though. Missed it by a few weeks. But, yeah, I'm sure it's Christmas somewhere in the world right now. Orthodox Christmas, maybe. Scotty, though. That's a decent card. This seems like a heavy... Uh... Oh, this is a heavy Mordor deck. This is a pretty strong push coming out, but the Flame and the Flight of the Dragons are still up that Scotty. Puts him crying, and the, the Succubus just gets melted by that fire, and that low attack reach really does not do her favors. Wondering how what the wall is going to do in this matchup. I mean, the wall is is decent, but having wall, having guardian, seems to be you know, quite the defensive. The strats, unless he doesn't play it against that, he's going to play the blue golem. Very defensive Mordor deck, it seems. The cleaver though does take out the defenso, and I have to remind players, defenso is not a cleaver counter. Do not this play defenso against mining. the cleaver. Please stop doing that. It keeps it's a happening. Mistake. Please. But yeah, Drone Busters though, pinging away. Yeah, it's willing on that blue golem, but it's getting awfully close to Shin's face. Oh, no, there's the fire. Oh, it does use the wall. XP lead heavily in favor of Shin here, this the early in the game. Health mm. about, well, health close enough to even. Not too much of a difference here. Oh, wow, that is a huge him. advantage for Shin, yeah. About 25 mm. experience ahead right now. I'm, I don't know about these snipers. There's no uh, banner man, and you're just you're resting a sniper. Okay, but I I don't love that pick from Dova. Yeah, no, it's not really a good res at all. I'd much rather see a Stixie if we're playing Mordor. That I mean, Stixie could also maybe justify a Dragon Ball, another activator. No, that's a good point. Annihilator sure here. Shield at the gonna get so much damage if that stun lancer. All the annihilated though. Yeah, yeah saving over a bit. But that was a lot of damage to take in. Still a good XP lead to Shin, and now also a very decent HP lead. Oh, Cleaver not hitting there. Tank last second. While Defenso does almost counter Cleaver if it has shields, but the shield just went off. Before Cleaver hit. Yeah. Actually, we see him play a Fire Dragon on top of Annihilator, but gets the job done. 
Hoping for a blue golem rest here, I'm guessing, uh, on Dova's side. Playing marines, though, that's a bit risky. You don't want to rest those. Yeah, I think Shen has Daggerfall in his deck. You don't want to rest two of those. Uh, it's looking like he's just going to rest the blue golem anyways. All right, then. That, that bridge swap uh, was questionable. Ooh. I guess he wanted to swap to kill the marines with the busters and not happen them. That's an eight-man Daggerfall, though. That's always nice to see. That shield actually doing something on the fire ramp. Oh, Mordor one, does have uh, his two tombstones now, and Guardian. Ooh, finally drops the Guardian. He wants rests though. He wants the tombstones down as soon as possible. Actually, a bit of a pain. Oh no, there's no answer yet to build the propeller hoard. and it's dead. Prop there hoard is still a very good card. <laughs> very good. Very good card. And defense so yeah, casual range. 120 DPS. Mordar uh, will take care of that largely. Marine says Succubus as well. Jin, though, at third perk. That is not going to be great because uh, face damage now will be much more difficult if he wants to keep that bridge. He does have Scrat Pack to take the uh, marked bridge, for example. Yeah. Sunland so, so has a decent potential to contest bridges. Just that it's not been going too well for him so far. It's just so unfortunate that uh, Doe is playing his anti-horde minion before Shin plays horde. The fence so not played against the horde. The Nihiler not played against the horde uh, lately. Not the Nihiler still is able to get the value in though at the end there. Again here, like you can see the Nihiler hitting face over and over. It doesn't matter. Vulnerable. Mm. <laughs> Hit as much as you want. This might end up being a frenzy game with the, the amount of XP Shin is getting. Yeah, Shin is, isn't really able to go aggressive with his deck against the Mortar, but Dover's really not just hanging on to these bridges at all. I mean, Dover does get his third perk, but his reses have been subpar at best so far, I have to say. Uh, Resting I'm not gonna get Sniper Scrat, which is uh, not good here. Well, actually, maybe. It's decent attack speed. It is decent, but what will it do against the Horde is the question. We'll find out in a second. Oh, Mo gets back hold. The we Dream find was out. alive for two, two seconds. Oh, but this time Shin plays Propeller Horde into the Annihilator. He does not have swap or does not use swap. Oh, well, quite the play you'd look for. The shield did whelps though. That cleaver's gone. Resist. Yeah, that is a friendly cleaver. That's pretty scary. Off it and goes. Those are, they are very scary. I'm not Look. sure if Shin is not using his bridge swap or just doesn't have it, but a lot of cases where bridge swap would have been good have, have not been used. I don't recall it being used, but nice handling of this frenzy cleaver though, stunning it up with those lances. Stunned lances are they're quite annoying for Mordar decks when they have a lot of high value minions. Wall haven't seen the most usage this game, I feel. But Shin, though, again, getting closer and closer to Frenzy. I mean, Dova isn't too far behind at 20 XP behind Shin, but still. And also, Dova, 300 HP behind Shin here. Invulnerable yeah. again. Shin like, is holding on to his protective bridge quite a bit, though. He's making some nice usage of it. This game just seems like, uh, okay, uh, Shin is doing damage to Dova, Dova plays Guardian to, to tank it up. Dova wants to do damage on Shin's face, Shin just gets invulnerable. I see it's the Guardian sad. Resurrection into the Blue Golem. The Guardian gets an actual attack now. I mean, Frenzy Guardian is, uh, well, it's a Guardian at least. I mean, it's just so sad to see though. Wow, well, you know, poggers. It's interesting to see though, like, that Scotty just hit face over and over and over again, but invulnerable. This still oh. does nothing. Oh, actually, I think it's 20 DPS. This and is, Frenzy uh, for Shin. Yeah. This is probably the end. Yeah, it just looks like Dover just did not hang on to the bridges. And uh, Shin's gonna be taking this one. Yeah, Dover. Stop us combo get... with the bridge swap. The reses he wanted, he got too many reses for. He got some, at least one or two reses with marines, multiple reses with snipers. He did get a few good reses with uh, succubus, guardian, uh, blue golem once. I don't know. I didn't don't recall.
but not the best reses. At the same time, though, I would have to say that I haven't not loving the use of bridge swap from Shin here. I think he could have utilized it way better than he did this game, but he still does take the game, so uh, can't complain too much. Yeah, just kind of waiting on the life counter to hit zero here. It's looking That's pretty poor, over. A poor annihilator, stunning the uh, poor. Yeah, not even being stunned by the stun lancers. He's actually holding out here. If he keeps holding out, he'll hit mana frenzy soon enough. Not gonna happen. I'm calling it, not gonna happen. <laughs> you seem so confident, but Mordor's really revved up there. Well, yeah, but it only takes... A... No, don't agree playing a Horde into the Annihilator. Plus oh, wait, no, he's got the No, it is over. <laughs> there we go. It was a glimmer so Nice, I finally saw my side of it. There we go. There One we second go. Shin shot. finally takes him down. 8 minutes and 37 seconds in. Uh, the kiss of death by the rampage succubus. Succubus with rampage. Uh, that, that's something that's decently scary. Yeah. Just, uh, honestly, Succubus is a bit of an underrated card in King Puff in general. The shield helps protect it pretty effectively from high burst damage, which can be Succubus' weakness, and uh, obviously the rampage is good for obvious reasons. You can use the shield on a succubus to tank a cleaver hit, for example. Exactly. And that succubus is pretty good, because that, well, that does a lot of damage to the cleaver before it can hit her again. Yeah, and then you can tank it. Which point you can easily it with an illusory cleaver. I see Dover is running... Is this your favorite Ravager skin? Yes. Indeed, okay. So Dover has the sprite the style. Fans. So we got the a rage sort of Ravager deck here. I have to double check this deck list. Drops down a Prowler. I think it's a Rabid Prowler as his first ah, right. play. This is his uh, Red Golem Guardian Ravager. I see. Red Golem Guardian Ravager Rage. Well, it if it works... RGR. And, and so I guess if he wants to Sunburn. And Sunburn could be really good against the Horde. He gets the Red Golem out. He mm. Sunburns the Horde and enrages the Red Golem, potentially. Yeah. We can just put the guy in front of that deck game and change it to Gurr. It would be so sexy though if Dova had a fireball in his deck. If only. If only. That would imply he actually had a good deck. <laughs> One day. <laughs> I can love dream. Oh, it's a nice application of the sunburn though. It is. I almost <laughs> thought he would miss one so the whelps would live. <laughs> nah. I think we're giving him a little bit too, a little bit too little credit there. I suppose, yeah. Even on XP, even on HP. Oh, never mind. The fire imp does shave off some of the West that was out there. Yeah, Ravager, this, first this push. Is, he'd be getting much done thanks to the defense of Chopper, unfortunately. Well, defense of just, just cutting it out, killing it. And then, uh, if you don't get first push Ravager to do anything, you're already decently behind as a Ravager. I feel like this deck more relies on the Frenzy than the uh, Brutus, though. Potentially, yeah. Still, though, I would want at least a thousand damage with my Brutus push initially, just to get pressure on. Yeah. I'd like to point out, his only real activators for the Rage elements here are Sunburn and Cheese Day. And Sunburn is not it's... necessarily... Sunburn yeah. isn't the proper activator. It's, uh, I have to hurt myself. Well, that fits with Dova. Yeah, Never when she's, it makes putting Cheese Day in your deck does seem to be hurting yourself as well. I mean, it, it all makes sense if you, if you know it's still playing it. Yeah. Well, there we oh. go. Nice Sunblade to get rid of the uh, buzzers. You can see that Rabbit Prowler coming on out. That Guardian DPS, though. Got He's the Frenzy the jump and the Rage. That is quite a lot of damage. Gets the Guardian inadvertently killed in the process. Unlucky, kind of, maybe. XP very, very even, but HP um, definitely in favor of Shin. Total is kind of dying right now. Those Horde horses, is kind of good. A while to get off of him. Yeah. He's just put like a thousand damage from the Propeller Horde alone. Horde and Stun Lancer is the kind of good together, I have to admit. <laughs> Shin <laughs> gives the scared him. emote, the BM. Well, is he BMing though? Maybe he knows the Red Golem is coming. He knows the end oh. is here. Oh, good point. Might be scared of that. Or he just unlands it and it's fine. 
Yeah, it's oh, fine. Oh, that's a good bridge swap. That's yeah, more that's like it, the then. Best bridge swap we've seen uh, the entire series. And in rate, he gets the proper rolls as well. Rolls the enrage on the whelps, and it just melts it. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know, it's the sunburn, but I think he's going to regret that with the propel horn coming in. He does not have a good way to deal with this now. And uh, Scotty is not a counter to Horde, have to have to say. Yeah, and Shin takes the set 2-0 decisively. Nice, nice, not... uh, nice defusal of the Red Golem there. Yeah, the Red Golem got literally zero done. Didn't even get the bridge. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. It didn't actually do anything. Just got swapped. I mean, I guess technically it forced Shin to, to swap bridges, but... I can't really say that's value. Uh, I mean, it was value for Shin, that's for sure. Well, Dova right. showcases that he has some unique deck building skills, and uh, even though he didn't win this match, he has won matches this tournament at least. So it, it does work some of the time. Mm hmm. All right, then. I'll bring it into our round six coverage as we go to the highlights and game spectating. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final round of the King Puff Cup 30 Swiss stage. A quick announcement to make that after this round, there will be a 20 minute break before the top eight starts. That's 20 minutes for the players and the uh, streamers to switch over and all that good stuff. So, without any further ado, let's recap round six. Cat 2 1s JF, Gamer 2 1s Grey Wolf, Memphisto 2 0s Rhinoceros, Darian 2 0s Kelgaroth, Fandaman 2 0s Hazard Bomber, Shin 2 0s The Dover Nation, TGX Andy 2 0s Thinking of Portals, Lazor 2 0s Pura, Villain Razor takes a win against Brainless and Courage, Flophorian 2 0s Divine, Regabe loses to Katsui, Kishin 2 0s Decimus, Tomato Mato wins against J Boy. Why So Die wins against Chevron. Salt Spirit 2 0s Archster. Digioso 2 0s Touch Me I'm Fluffy. Von Slacken 2 0s Sad Hippo. Toxic 2 1s in Joker. And that is it for round 6. Going into round 7, we have Memphisto versus Cat. The Matchup for the ages. Titans. Yeah. The, the biggest of the big. The. The masters of the mast, I don't know, the some the of the arms. best players. Like, the two of the best, if not the two best players in the game. Honestly, I'd argue they're the two best players. I, th I don't think anyone can say that these two are not the cream of the crop, the, the best there is at this time. Nobody does it better. Really not. Also, of course, I mean, they are facing each other for a reason. They are quite... Similar on points. Cat still reigning supreme uh, in the first spot here. 18 points. Only taking one loss this entire uh, group stage. Pretty impressive. Yeah, that, that was to... Let me see. JF. Yeah, JF. JF the only person to take a single game off of Cat so far. And the moral victory. Imagine... Got one. <laughs> I imagine Memphisto will be looking to change that real soon. Oh yeah, definitely. So, these decks... You can dissect nothing but serious decks coming out of these two, and they definitely don't fail to deliver on that. Cat with the, uh, the pandited system of having decks that are basically identical, so that you really can't actually ban any of them. You're really more... I mean, you, you have the, uh... Master. Yeah, you do have the identical four Illo Cleavers, four Scrat Packs, and then you start seeing a few changes. Only minor changes, though, and that really depends on what the higher end looks like. You more from Yeah, you have this... Visto packing his illusory cleavers and screaming scraps in every deck. Yeah, like you can really see that uh, they these players favor certain cards. Both players have three decks with divine. Both players have uh, well, all illo cleavers. And uh, cat bringing three decks with fire rim, for example here. Yeah, he's, he's a big fan of that card, and it's uh, not hard to see why. It's a very strong card. Same with Spear Throwers. Three of those.
All right, so Memphis is just taking a quick bathroom break while we wait on those bands. So we get to do some band predictions. That's always fun. Finally, for once. So I think it goes without saying Memphis is probably going to ban out that King Puff. Just really don't yeah, want to do that. Puff, probably uh... the King Puff and the Volco, I imagine. He's considering how, while Cat is good in um, in all of these decks. He's not going to perform badly in any of them, but uh, considering how strong he's uh, showcased his Volko today, I think playing the Volko is definitely a wise move, and I definitely agree as well that the KP, not a deck you want to face anyway. He does not have the Horde, the Propeller Horde in his KP, but still, mm -hmm. uh, a KP is very, very dangerous uh, with, you have the, the Fire Imp, the Whelps, the Bussers, uh, Divine. Yeah. I'd also like to put out a special note. I don't know if this changed during the progression of the tournament, but Cat was, Cat was allegedly having some major freezing issues right before the tournament today. So the fact that he's I only had... lost a single game throughout the whole tournament and possibly having freezing issues is really impressive. Well, to beat Cat, Cat basically needs to have his game crash for you to be able yeah. to do that in most cases. Cat has to but... literally not be able to play the game in order for you to win. His keyboard must short out. Even then, he can probably just use his mouse and win. But with the, the freezing FDM issue, that just isn't enough. <laughs> it is not. The freezing issue is one that I've uh, had per as well. I think I, I get it sometimes after an update. Hashtag blame FTM. So I have to reinstall. Hmm. Meanwhile, so FTM can it. Off of Memphis, though. Mm, hard choices. They're all kind of worrying next his performance in this tournament so far. I mean, I would ban the, the Milloween from Mephisto at least. Maybe, yeah. And then yes, it's, shown, of... it's quite good. All four decks are honestly kind of scary to go up against. They are, Especially but in I... Cat's position. I do still think that banning Milloween and King Puff, especially when there's a Propeller Horde King Puff and an Empowered... Oof. Hmm. If Cat or if Mephisto bans the KP and Volko of uh, of Cat, or yeah, if Mephisto bans the KP and Volko of Cat, then he will still have the Morda, for example, with the Fireball, which would be a bit better versus the Empowered and Horde deck, but still not a deck I want to face, to be honest. Yeah. Cat will have the first ban going in here, so we'll be getting that in in just a second. Any once, second now. <laughs> once bitten in three of Mephisto's decks, as I think I mentioned earlier as well. I mean, yeah. got, the card has gotten way more play after the, it got its uh, mana buff. Well, yeah, generally when you decrease stuff on mana cost, it's... Uh... It sees some experimentation at least, and once been the two mana, it, it seems, you know, fairly balanced. It's a strong yeah. card, you get a great unit out of it, but there's that sacrifice element to it. So you just still yeah, have to keep uh, something up for it. Definitely proven to be way more of a balanced card. Uh, not OP, not shit, uh, so far. Which is Cat good. Cat out the Stormbringer. Memphis oh, yeah. was a trademark. Yeah. Definitely. I, I remember back back in the day, way, way uh, back, when Mephisto just dominated with Stormbringer control. Stormbringer he was control. invincible with Stormbringer. It was you a nightmare. could not beat him. I, I, at that point, uh, I didn't win a single game versus him. Obviously, I was way worse at that time, but still. Oof. Mephisto bans out the King Puff and the Morda. Does not ban out the Volko, but I can't say the Mordor ban was too unexpected. You do see, I guess they don't want to face a Mordor here, where he has the, the Blue Golem, the Harbinger, the Succubus, the Tank. Especially if you're going to play your Ratbo, you don't want to have the uh, Tank potentially with Daka, necessarily. Yep, so we're waiting on Cat's final ban here. I suspect it's going to be the Milwaukee, but you never know. Yeah, I I really... If if I was Cat, I would definitely do Milwaukee. And I think I think Chat will mostly agree with me, I hope. No, he bans oh. KP. He's keeping that, oh. that Milwaukee in play. He doesn't want to do it against... He doesn't want to go against either Empowered Soul Stealer. Oh yeah, actually, that's... Uh, yeah, you know what? 
I might have been wrong. My brain just thought that the KP was banned because I'm not thinking. But yeah, this KP, both are valid options. I'm guessing the cat has a plan to deal with this Milloween and he, just, he does not want to face shielded hordes and uh, empowered. And that, that's very fair. So we'll be getting the set underway in just a moment. Cat I wonder if Cat will just... This, if Cat opens, I mean, he might just open with his Volko again. Be like, okay, I won like all my games with Volko, or like at least the all the games I've seen he's played Volko. Might, might as well just go with it. I think either one's a bad option to open up with. They seem really consistent decks of previous performances, anything to go by. Definitely, and, and the Bannerman sniper combo, as I stated before, is quite strong. You can get a lot of value, especially with Stormbringer. Seems players are uh, ready to go. Or close to it, at yeah, least. Yeah, everyone's putting the ready up checks around. It's also nice to see that Cat is bringing stints in a few of his decks. Yep, here we go. Underused card, I feel. All right, the last match of the Swiss stage. It's Cat versus Memphis, though. Cat does open up with that Volko, like you said. Uh Cat not using the proper Volko skin, though. Re. <laughs> I think he was using the uh, Volko Volko last game too. So. Fair enough. Had Didn't to be notice. expected, I suppose. Meme Fisto still running that uh, Magma Storm avatar though. It feels like he's been running that forever. No, I'm fairly certain I could ruin this treasure vault skin forever, by the way. Look at the coin directly south of the Master Tower. If you're doing from Memphis' perspective, it's clipping into the floor. I Ruined. see. Ruined. Ruined forever. Ah, got that heal puff. <laughs> and full HP again. Oh, no, never mind. I lied. Yep, yeah, can't get some early bridge dominance thanks to these multi-unit minions. It's what they're good at. But XP is still uh, even, and I was right that Cat opened with this Volko. Yep, yeah, and Manfisto swaps out that Elite Sorma for a Werewolf. Fair trade, I would say. I think it's going to be a very interesting match to see if Volko can burn down Milloween before we get the third perk. I do finally see the, uh, the marked bridge. Finally. <laughs> yeah. This seems to be something to do with visual effects and not actually showing up when you join a spectating ad an issue where I couldn't see burn the bridges when it was activated too. We'd I definitely think like I to might note... know why that's happening, so. We'd definitely like to note that uh, Cat has been taking care of these uh, healing puffs very effectively. XP still even, completely. Slight HP lead. Yep, well, decent nice HP lead now too, Volko. Slow game so far. Well, they're very much used to between these two. Cat is pulling ahead in HP though, and if Mephisto can't get a decent healing puff off eventually, that will, this will start to hurt. The bolts Indeed. will continue. These bolts are starting to add up very quickly. And again, if Cat counters the healing puffs as well as he has so far, it'll be hard for Mephisto to really recover that HP. Doesn't- Oh no, Ooh. he does not get the illusory cleaver off there. Pushes the Divine Warrior onto the bridge, he really wants this healing puff dead. Daggerfall though. He's finally there. gonna get it after he was about 300, 400 health. Not what you were looking for, obviously, there. Yeah, XP the, the heal still... puff is king in this match. It is. XP is- Exactly even, still, and HP more even than it was. Yep, that those heals. Uh, honestly, I'd say uh, you don't want it to be this close as well, because I'm not sure how even it is, especially how much healing then Fister managed to pull off. We see now, a though, again, very defensively played heal puff. That's just going to die to the flame, unfortunately. It is. Again, though, you see that Volko just pulls ahead with the bolts and manages to DPS Mephisto down a good bit, but the healing puff just takes one good one and Every HP's back time up. Every these archers just get daggerfalled by Cat. Cat is having his first tiny XP lead of the game. It's very insignificant, though. 
Especially when you it stack is. it up to Milloween's perk free versus Volko perk free. I'm pretty sure Milloween usually just wins that. Oh yeah. But of course, and again. Perk two for Volko means you just gotta hold on to burn the bridges every time until that healing buff gets played. Yeah, the second perk Volko is not gonna let uh, Milloween heal any HP at all. I don't think Mephisto's gonna have an easy time getting the third perk here. Okay, it's probably gonna look to end it as soon as possible now. Falling close to 1000 HP. Heal yeah, again. they're dropping very low now from these. With the combination of the Firebolts and that Warrior connecting the face, and we know there's no way he's gonna be able to heal back out of this, so. He needs to be a bit more now, careful. Mephisto. Cat's still even on the XP, but Cat has really pulled ahead in the HP, and with the Bridge Burn, as stated, the Heal Puff is not getting any value. Basically, two wasted mana at this point. Yeah, it's pretty rough. If Mephisto can't get his third perk ASAP, this is gonna... this might be the end of game one. I mean, he should Oof. stay alive until perk three. The question is, will it make the difference? Just with the amount of damage over time, Cat is able to churn out on an instant. Well, the Burning Bridges was used, but Heal Puff still dies to uh, Spirit Throwers. Yeah, Heal Puff played a little bit improperly. The Cat not letting Mephisto get back into the game, I think, at all. Just gonna yeah. keep the pressure on. Five more burns should do it, that's not a hard feat. Especially not with a Volko. One more card will do it. Yeah, the game has been won for... Game 1 has been won for Cat here. And Mephisto not able to keep the Volko pressure off. Well, it's a matter of time down now on his bottom bridge. is throwing everything he can on there, but... It's not it's... gonna be too any effect, and that's gonna be the game for Cat. Cat even placed two bolts on interface to make sure Mephisto is properly dead. Mm -hmm. One thing I did notice, though, in that game was that uh, Mephisto kept playing uh, archers in the range of his face so that the, uh, the Daggerfall hit both the archers and face on at least two, three occasions, and that does add up, that face damage. It does. Cat, very dominant in that game one, just the heal puff is not good against Volko. I feel that's how a lot of these, like, Mephisto-Cat matchups go. Either you have Mephisto showing dominance, or you have Cat showing dominance. Then again, you can also see very close matches. We'll see if Mephisto is, uh, He's a bit tired of uh, losing that first game and wants to show that uh, he is, as well, a titan. Or something of the like. We'll see. Here comes that Rappo. Like we said, Rappo against Volko. It's pretty Volko-sided most of the time. Well, we'll see if uh, Mephisto has what it takes. I mean, this is like a not completely normal uh, Yeah, it is Rappo a bit of an deck. unorthodox Rappo deck in some cases, thanks to that sniper squad. Mm. And I'm imagining Memphis was never gonna let Cat dagger full the snipers ever. Oh, with that banner man around, he's probably even just gonna straight up bait the dagger full out. As we yeah. see there, I don't think Cat expected him to have banner man available as well, but nice punish debated. <laughs> At that oh, point, it's just a roll of dice. Oh, he wants bid the banner man! I like it! Oh, Getting a little yeah. bit of extra value out of it. Unfortunately, not dead unit. unfortunately, it's not going to be enough with that Divine Warrior tanking up. It is not. XP lead in Mephisto's favor, not by a lot, but every little bit counts. Mephisto taking some damage, though. Not sure what Stunlance is going to do in this matchup. Cat doesn't really have any big units that's going to be punished by the Stunlancers too much. Well, this saved Mephisto for quite a bit of damage from the Morgul and the Warrior, so... I'd say it's about 300 health saved. Potentially, yeah. See Cat hovering that dagger falls like, I don't want to do it. I... Ah. So tempting. So tempting, but by the time it's even worth considering, they're out of range of it. But the Spear Throwers will handle them just fine. Yeah. It, it just feels was, like, uh... even with the Sniper Squad value, like... Cat's just able to deal with it so easily. He just let... He just doesn't play anything. He doesn't need more presence. He's Volko. 
Yeah, definitely. Volker must have also, killed him himself. Also, we're really seeing the value that Cat puts on to the, the Spirit Throwers and why he's included in so many of his decks. Like, they're getting good value every game. Yeah. It just feels like the Sniper Squad is just never gonna have an impact. An X I mean, an XP lead in decent favor of Mephisto, oh, but HP go. lead... In Cat. favor of Mephisto. Oh, Cat gets very aggressive with that Daggerfall, trying to catch Mephisto off guard for the extra amount of value, but... Yeah, it's that cat and mouse game. Do you have it? Are you gonna play it? Do I- am I gonna play it? But again, the Usually. spear throw is dealing with them to ease! The spear throw is also being tanky enough to just not die to, uh, to everything as well, so it does provide some decent support. Docking a whelp, not the optimal target, but cat doesn't really have any really big minions either. Cat holding his Daggerfall in wait. Mephisto does have a decent XP lead though. Ah, oh, again. The preemptive Batman that time, I think it was. I don't know what time it was on that, but it's still not I mean, working out. Either way. This transformation effort to burn the bridges, that's the death knell for the sniper squad. Yeah, that's and just. So it has hold onto the bridges pretty well this game. If you can keep yeah, that up, you might be in the business, but. Yeah, Mephisto's uh, winning trade here will probably be getting Frenzy, I think, will be his main win condition this game, if he can hold on that long. It I seems mean, like Cat it. has taken zero damage this game, not even a, a hint of damage. That's a good point, but I don't think Mephisto's particularly interested in dealing damage. You're not going to outrace a Volko. No, you're not. But still, it's worth mentioning that uh, Cat is not pressured at all here. He can just sit back, relax, and keep uh, bolting and uh, damaging. That's oh. interest. He was really anticipating the burn the bridges there, I think. Yeah, I think that as well. I mean, really, the sniper is not getting much value, though, in the shop. You have the Morgul, you have the bridge burn, you have the dagger. It's, uh, shield doesn't it's do just enough. It's a fake card, honestly. Like, he's gonna ban a man, it doesn't make it any harder for Cat to deal with. He's still got the burn the bridges in his hand. The second they cross he the bridge, he's not gonna. He just doesn't play anything and waits for the sniper squad to reach the bridge. He doesn't need to play anything, and the XP lead is narrowing in Cat's favor here. Cat here almost catching up. the bridges. And gone. It's just gone. They just don't do anything for Memphis, though. And, and that value from Spear Thrower is just taking out the wealth as well. It's a nice fire from Mephisto, he actually holds onto the bridge there. A little bit annoying for Cat, but Mephisto is slowly entering that lethal range again. There's nothing that Mephisto can do. There's, yeah, it's he just, just doesn't... pretty conclusive. Yeah, the, as I said, should have banned the Volko. <laughs> should have banned Just ban the Volko! You've got to ban Cat's Volko! I told you, Mephisto! Even before he criticizes me for, for being dumb or something, but... Uh... I mean, Cat's yeah, we... really showing that uh, Volko, I mean, he knows how to play it. Play it he well. He knows how to play Volko, and Volko means business. Ban the Volko. Just, just ban the Volko, it's too good. No All one ever right. said it was weak. As the end of our featured match for round seven. We'll A be bit joining you very sad, soon almost. Some, uh, I was really hoping for, like, uh, ten-minute games and, like, a 2-1 or something. I was really yeah, hoping... We had, we had two six-minute games, that's good enough. <sighs> I guess I'm just too greedy. <laughs> All right, we'll be going into some spectator content, and I'm bringing an end to the Swiss stage soon after before we go into our 20-minute break. We'll Indeed. see you guys soon enough. All right, everyone, welcome back. It is the end of the Swiss group stage, and what a stage it has been. So, we have got a... Uh, Got some last words to come in, and we've got a top eight to announce. Note that after this announcement, there will be a 20-minute break between the Swiss stage and the top eight. So, here we go. Finally, further ado, in order, the finalists for the King Puff Top 30 are... First place, we have Cat. Second place, we have Dirian. Third place is JF. Fourth place is Grey Wolf. Fifth place is Memphisto. Sixth place is Video Gamer 77. 
Seventh place is Kelgaroth, and eighth place is Rhinoceros. AKA Sinew, I believe. In eighth there. But yeah, uh, final comments, quick. Uh, well, Cat uh, at the top, not surprising at all. Won every single game except one, which is impressive even by his standards, I would say. I mean, Video Gamer in number six. Are we happy to see Gamer back in top eight to where he belongs? <laughs> and uh, Rhinoceros, or uh, Sin Yu, Sin Sin, whatever. I don't know why he changed his name, but uh, good name either way. I'm uh, hoping it got cleared up with the KPC staff ahead of time, if that's the case. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm very certain it is Sin. Same avatar as uh, that, and the uh, Discord name is, uh, is Sin, so... Hopefully I'm not making a huge ass of myself of being wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Well, but we'll yeah. find out if someone calls you an idiot in chat. <sighs> Please, no. But yeah, <laughs> definitely uh, definitely it was a very interesting uh, group stage. Didn't see any games from Kelgaroth on stream, I believe. Not the player I know much Snuck either. in there, it seems. I mean, I'll, we'll also highlight JF's performance. Uh, JF, yeah. He's uh, been number three here. 17 points. Very mm -hmm. respectable. All right, then. So that is going to end the coverage of the group stage. Uh, the stream will be going offline, I think, while we switch streamers. I don't know. I don't quite know how that works. But when we come back, I believe the casting will be done by... Let me see here. Is it Rush, Rush second, second and Apples? And Apples. Yes, that's it. Rush Seconds and right. Apples will be taking over, and we will be streamed by Smoshy. A uh, special shout out to Nella Joe, who has been our observer for this Swiss stage. And special shout out, obviously, to our admins for making this uh, chaotic early stage go as smoothly as possible. Definitely. Uh, Salbine, Jules, uh, doing a great, great job behind yeah, the scenes. It's, it's been a fantastic tournament, an absolute pleasure to cast. And, well, good luck to everyone with the top eight stage. Yeah, definitely good luck, and uh, hope everyone really enjoys the top eight.